21 fuckers uh today on the adventure we have uh my friend student um jiu-jitsu practitioner <laughs> father husband soldier philosopher mitch short hello yeah, i know he's philosopher <laughs> <laughs> yeah i yeah i was trying to make him jeff Mira just make you blush but i don't think it's gonna happen no. so uh you are uh to me a very interesting young man so that's why i wanted to have you we always have great conversations in the gym so i thought everyone should know how how fucking deep Mitch is. You yeah. Know? How, <laughs> how damaged he really is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but so you have you have an awesome story with your military background and, and, and all sorts of other, you know, shit in life. So I thought uh, maybe we'd uh, share some of your perspective on the world and, and take yeah. it from there. What, um, how long were you in for? I was in for a little over 10 years. Holy shit. Yeah, that's that's a good chunk. Yeah. And when, uh, so if I if I start going off on shit that you don't want to talk about, just tell me to shut the fuck no up. Problem. But you knew what you signed up for when you walked in the door. Yeah. So. <laughs> but ten, 10 years and my excuse my ignorance in it is like what uh what was your like rank in the military? Like I don't really know how it works. So I just uh, I got to the rank of corporal, um, which isn't too crazy. It's only two ranks up. But I didn't want to go any higher. I actually turned down a promotion twice mm -hmm. because I didn't want to stay in the infantry any longer. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, so we'll back up a bit. Uh, they, uh, you don't need to worry. Like, there's yeah. no fucking game plan here. We just talk, <laughs> yeah, we no just talk, we just talk shit. So, uh, so where and where did you like? Where did you travel to when you were when you were in? Like, so I was uh, an infantry soldier, and I was posted to Gagetown, New Brunswick, and then after. About two years there, I was in Afghanistan from January to August 2007. Operation you, Athena is what it was called. Yeah. And the, did you just, how many tours did you do? Were you just there? One. And just, just the one that was yeah, enough for you? It was enough for me, yeah. yeah <laughs> for sure. Well, I don't know, because yeah. I'm sure you feel the same way, but like I, my other guys that were in the service, like they all they want to do is fucking go back. Do you feel like that or you're like, no, you're good? Uh, well, you know, like, different jobs, different experience, different yeah, different yeah. times, different experiences too, right? Like, I know guys who went back for a second and third tour, and they swam and ate ice cream most of the time. Yeah, you know, when my tour was a little different. The year before, '06 was very different as well. '06 and '07 were the bad times. Pretty basically. ugly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, man. That's a uh, I. Military free, freaks me out, but I got so much respect for guys that go and do it. But at the same time, like, fuck, why would you sign up for that? You know what I mean? Yeah. But you kind of know, like, it's not, you know, it's not. Yeah, you you know what you're going to, towards. Yeah. You think you know anyway, right? Yeah. And then you get there and you're like, holy shit! But like, it was actually it was going back. It was nine eleven that actually got me into the recruiting center. That's how far back we're going. Really? <laughs> was that what yeah. what actually like put you on it? You yeah. just wanted to? Yeah, it was. It was nineteen, I think, when it happened. Nineteen or twenty. I remember sitting at work and people were talking about it on break and we didn't really know what was going on, right? Mm -hmm. And like somebody flew planes into the tower, like what, what are you talking about? And of course you get home from work and it's all over the TV and yeah, that was, that was it. Yeah, that's you know, crazy. Young I, and looking for something to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, re, I remember that. You were, were you born yet? Yeah, you were born. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember like anything. Like I don't, people always talk about it. I can't remember what happened or what I was doing when, when I, I, I happened, remember but. like the, I, I remember this, the second plane hitting like live. I was watching it on TV because the yeah. first one happened and it was only, and so it was all over the news right away. Yeah. And then I was sitting there watching the news and then all of a sudden the second one hit and live on camera. And yeah. it, that wasn't dude, an accident. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man <laughs> the whole world it changed the entire world yeah like, forever. right it's yeah. fucking insane people are nuts man like and to come up with a scheme like that and pull it off like that's not like they just that mm. took years of prep yeah. you know what i mean yeah. it wasn't a fluke you didn't just jump in an airplane and steal it like they <laughs> we need uh eddie bravo on here for this one <laughs> <laughs> right but those guys that, that hatched that scheme like they went to they went through flight school and everything else with that in yeah. mind from the get-go yeah or they were groomed that way or whatever you know what i mean yeah. like however whatever there's so many different narratives and conspiracies yeah, and, of course either but, way, well no matter who no matter how, what crazy scheme people like or say it was and whatever else it was fucking horrible and it, people lost their lives and it changed it changed the fucking planet man yeah, absolutely like, yeah like yeah, everywhere there's no debating that yeah. yeah and now you can only assume that there's some fucking maniacs out there that are trying to hatch a plan to fucking make it worse up, up that you mm -hmm. know isn't that fucked up yeah what a world we live in so how long are so what year did you go in then like how long after that 
So, Did you uh, walk out of work that day and just go to the recruiting? Uh, yeah, pretty much, actually. And then uh, I didn't get in right away because of like job openings and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's the government, right? But uh, eventually I got in, sworn in, beginning of 2004. And then by that fall, I was in basic training. And I finished basic training before Christmas. And then I was off to Meaford, Fuck. which is a terrible place. In the winter? Yeah. I went there in January. Oh, oh no thanks. man. God, it was cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, my first night there, they were like, uh, there's a snowshoe run tomorrow morning at 4.30 a.m. And I went to my room and I looked out the window and, you know, January and no one sound. And I'm thinking, nah, they'll cancel it. It's too crazy no, no, out no. there. And not like no, that. No, no, no. I was outside every morning doing snowshoe runs and rock marches, freezing to death. You know, all of my, everything, uh, all my soldier, like military soldier type friends, the shit they tell me, and I'm like, nothing you've ever said to me sounds appealing you know what i mean like nothing everything you everything that comes out of your guy's mouth is is uncomfortable as fuck i'm like but i guess once you're in you don't get to leave it's not like nah the weather's shit i'm gonna go home i a lot of people quit actually really when i got to meaford in the first three weeks we lost 17 guys really voluntarily eh? released yeah can you just quit like a normal job yeah you can quit so like if you're on the course and you say i don't want to do this anymore then you go to what's called holding platoon, and then you, you're processed out from there. And that can take however long it wants because it's the government, right? So mm-hmm. it can take months. I know when I started my course in January in Meaford, by the time I graduated in May, the people that quit in January were still there waiting to go home. Oh, so shit. Yeah. <laughs> like a bit of a punishment. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you should have stuck it out, bitch. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah and they, like, they send you to the kitchen and stuff too to, to do shitty work, right? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, I don't know. Like, like I mentioned earlier, you kind of know what you're signing up for. Like, it's not a holiday, man. Like, yeah. it, they treat you like dog shit from the very get go to see what you're fucking made of, yeah. right? There was two guys who got two instructors that got kicked off of my course for abusing human rights. Nice, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, I can't remember. It was years ago now where uh, there was a big fucking thing with the uh, airborne because they were hazing so hard. Yeah. And uh, that it was all over the news, and like they, cha- I think they cha- actually changed a lot of their policies and Late stuff. Late nineties, like, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. But I'm like, it's none of our fucking business. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah their hazing exists in, in everything. Martial arts, we haze. Yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, come to our grading. Come to our grading, man. You get treated like shit. Yeah. Like, but that's part of it. Like, if so if those right guys aren't willing to eat that shit for you, what? How much can you trust him when you get out, yeah. when it's ugly? You know what I mean? Yeah. Hazing's a, a super huge and part, a, a por- important part of, like, that military lifestyle. And in most tribes, and you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. tribes or teams or whatever, hockey fucking hazes. Everyone yeah. hazes, right? Yeah. And then what you guys do or have done is on a fucking other level. So, yeah, <laughs> those guys better be real. They, they got to make some sacrifices and earn their spot. That's what hazing is, right? Exactly. It's your right of passage. Yeah, yeah you should get treated like dog shit. And if you're going to piss and moan about it, going into it, like, <laughs> what'd you think? They don't last. Yeah. <laughs> right? It, you yeah. Get, like here, when you get, you know what's going to happen to you when you get your blue belt. Yeah. You know, it's a fucking horrible, shitty experience. There's nothing about that whole thing that's awesome until you're done. Then yeah. you're like, but you have to go through it in order to, or to, get your place in the lineup that's yeah. just how it works right and you knew from the get-go you came to you came to that first grading as a white belt we're like fuck yeah. <laughs> right? that was your opportunity to leave right there i'm not changing it because you're a pussy yeah like this is just how it's uh, how i learned Good point and this is how it's always been and that's just the way it is yeah. and it's just ha- it's a hazing across the board whether it's martial arts and military or anything if you did if you want to do it like it's no problem man yeah. go, go back to school do something else this is a admission price Fuck yeah. For, for, for anybody listening who doesn't know, can you explain what the gauntlet is exactly? Uh, <laughs> do you want to take this one or you want no, me to do it? No, that's you, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've gone through yeah, it. I like it. Uh, <laughs> See, that's an interesting perspective. Yeah, yeah. Well, some people do love it. Mm-hmm. So the way the, the grading, the way that everyone's, every school's a little bit different. We kind of took it to a new level, I think. <laughs> but when you get, uh, for me, like, usually it takes two to three years to get your first belt, like blue belt. We're, we're strict with our how we grade and so promotion day we get everyone who's ready to go up for a new belt whether it's blue or purple whatever we put them in the middle and then uh and we just we literally just make, make them fight for a couple hours like usually an hour and a half they roll for and it's, it's a fresh guy on you like every minute or two there's a fresh guy so there's no it's just designed for you to get murdered you're not gonna win <laughs> if you're still winning an hour in man like 
we're doing it wrong, yeah. right? <laughs> it's designed for you to get punished. And then when you're done, uh, we hand out everyone's new belts, pretty much. And then you walk through, it's like a quarter, like a gauntlet. And anyone who's higher rank than you whips you with your belt. And I will be the first one to say that you know, there's videos of it everywhere and whatever else. It's way worse than it fucking looks online. I found any glad. I don't know about you. But I didn't know. I thought it was going to hurt more. I kind of, I'd like right. to well, we'll talk shit. We'll up our game. Yeah. We'll up our game next screen. <laughs> but like, and everyone takes it different too, right? Because yeah. I I don't get it anymore. I'm on top of the heap. No one hits me. But I always, everyone I talk to, you're like, dude, that's so much worse than yeah, I I've thought. seen people drop. Right? Like, yeah, dropped to literally dropped to their knees in yep. pain. Yeah, I, not... I think the best was uh, the big stupid newbie, Mark Riley, because <laughs> he's such a tough, fucking rugged, like manly man. And he took that first whip and he fucking whimpered like a little girl and almost fell over. I was like, yeah, awesome, buddy, fuck you. So oh. it, it, it's, but it, yeah, again, that's your rite of passage, right? And then you, sh you, you knew. You, two years ago, you saw this happen. You didn't just show up one day and you're getting a new belt. You knew. You've been to several gradings before it happened to you, and like. You knew if you didn't want it, you should have fucking tried. I don't know knitting or something. <laughs> you know what I mean, or fucking karate, where you get to go, you know, just do patterns and forms, and they hand you a new belt because you gave them a hundred bucks. Right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they, uh, I don't know. It's uh, I don't know. It's, it, you should have anything worth having. You got to earn that shit, like through suffering. So that's what we do. We just make you suffer a little bit extra. You know what I mean, right, whatever. But and uh, yeah, this same thing. Like I trust those those people. Trust you, and. You have to, the guy, if it's jiu-jitsu, you, you have to have, there's a level of trust with the guys you roll with. Yes. Because you have to trust that they put you in a position and you submit that they're not going to fucking hurt you. Yeah. Right? So there's that level of trust as well. And then it gets greater and greater the better you get at your skill too, right? So, and people fall off because of lack of commitment or life changes. But like, that's why every grading, like, the higher, higher up you get, the less people get to hit you because you're in charge of more people too. <laughs> right? So, I don't know. Yeah. Um. So you went over, so you did only did one tour. I'm not saying only like you. No, I know yeah, you, you mean, didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't yeah. just underperformed or anything yeah. like that. But <laughs> what, um, what made you, uh, after your first tour, you decided you didn't want to go back? Was there like a deciding factor or it just wasn't your lifestyle? Yeah. So like pre-deployment training was about one year. So that's like 24-7. You're gone. Evenings and weekends, you're out in the training area. You're doing all different types of soldiering. Some's relevant to the mission some's not because it's it's a learning process for the leadership as well because most of them have never been there either right yeah yeah <clears throat> so eventually when i got overseas um obviously a huge culture shock afghanistan is like if you ever wanted to see what the seventh century was like that's really yeah. go, just hop on a plane and go check it out i don't think you can take a plane to afghanistan but i'm sure you could probably land in pakistan and walk over <laughs> doesn't sound awesome yeah, to me yeah, yeah, it's not but yeah i just i just remember getting there and it was a completely different world like yeah did this 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 shock of being there and when i finally got to like where i was going my my building because when you land in kandahar airfield or CAF as they call it you've got like the americans have <clears throat> have their their base you know the brits the canadians the aussies everybody's got their own corner of this big massive airfield I remember I'm like, oh, well, this isn't so bad. You know, I go into my room, there's bunk beds, air conditioning, and then I'm laying down and like two minutes later, knock on the door. Yeah, you're going out tomorrow. You're going to, uh, where was the FOB Massamgar, Ford Operating Base Massamgar. So Ford Operating Base is just a little tiny square base out in the middle of nowhere. So I got helicoptered out and I landed. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay, all right, well, this isn't so bad, you know, it's, it's hot. It's a desert. You're in a tent. You're in a cot, doing uh, front gate security and stuff like that. But then, like, okay, all right, now we're going out for real. We're going out. We're doing what they call leaguers. So you go out with uh, maybe say twenty vehicles, armored vehicles, tanks, and tank uh, wheel tank vehicles. We call mm -hmm. them labs. That's what I was in. And you go out, and they'll set up like a three hundred sixty degree perimeter out in the middle of nowhere with like the vehicles are like say 50 meters apart and they're all you're covering 360 degrees for safety obviously and yeah and that's that's what we did we do a leaguer we do a patrol of a village anywhere from two kilometers to i think 15 kilometers was the most that we did which is a fucking lot with about 100 pounds of gear you know 40 50 degree weather people shooting at you ieds landmines 
Nobody likes you. Nobody wants you there. It's a fucking mess, man. But, uh, yeah, so just did leaguers for six weeks, nonstop, roll forward, dismount, do a patrol, sleep two, sometimes four hours. I was low on the totem pole, so I had security shift from 2 to 4 a.m., and then again from 5.30 to 7 a.m., so I didn't really sleep. And I also had to carry the machine gun or the machine gun ammo, so my gear was about about 100 pounds, 110 pounds that I was carrying. Yeah. So you've cut weight before, obviously, as a professional fighter. Yeah. So imagine cutting weight every day for six months. That's, that's it. <laughs> exactly. And this, that's how I explain. That's how I explain weight cutting to people. I'm yeah. like, they're like, uh, I'm like, no, you're actually lost. You're lost in the desert, man. Yeah. You've been out there in the heat for hours and hours. Like, sorry, let's we'll say days. Yeah. There's no water in you. You haven't eaten. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's what cutting weight is. No, no thanks. And but no one's shooting at me when I'm yeah. cutting weight, and I'm not going to step on a goddamn landmine. Yeah, the mines are the worst because Afghanistan is very heavily mined, mm. like especially from the times the Russians were there, because they just they just dropped them wherever they wanted, and they didn't mark anything. And I actually got lost, or not lost, but stuck in a in a minefield, and I didn't even know it. I got the I got orders like fuck, fourth week on the ground. We were on the highway one. It's a highway that they built, so like, on a, like a first world highway. And uh, we stopped. And when you stop, you have to get out and do security. So you dismount out of the vehicle, and the soldiers go anywhere from 10 to 20 meters away from the vehicle. And you see something, you shoot it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, so this particular instance, I, I didn't want to get off the, the road because it had rained the night before, and I didn't see any wildlife tracks in the sand. And then when I was doing training, we pre-deployment pre -deployment training, they were like, that's an indication that there's something wrong. Don't, don't go on, don't go in that area if there's no tracks. And uh, <clears throat> the sergeant's like, get out there and do your box search. I was like, man, I don't want to fucking do that. I don't see any tracks out there. <laughs> and he's like, I'm giving you a direct order. I was like, fuck. So I walk out my 10 meters straight, and then I hear them yelling my name, short, short, shorty. And I turn around, and they're like, come back, come back, come back. And they're like, no, no, stop. So I'm getting like conflicting orders. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? And I look up in the next vehicle, and they're all running back. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So I start walking back, and I'm retracing my steps as I go. And I, I'm like, well, what? You told me to go do my box search. What's going on? And the sergeant's like, nothing. Just mount back up. We're leaving. And I hop back in. I go up in the air sentry hatch, and the platoon commander is on the other side. And I, I take a glance at the map, and there's a big fucking red circle where we are. And I'm like... Assholes. Fuckers. <laughs> 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 yeah, that could have been worse. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's like, Jesus. Um, uh, is there, so when you, w is there a divide between your commanding officers and, and the guys that are lower on the totem pole? You know what I mean? You or, do what you're told. Yeah. Yeah. For, I know it's not a yeah. negotiation by any means, but do you, because uh, I don't really understand how it works. Like, uh, yeah, of course you take, you could take orders, you yeah, you do them whatever else, but I'm just wondering if there's that, that healthy respect, like because for me, you mentioned earlier, like you said, the guys that were training you, like, they hadn't been there either, right? Mm -hmm. For me, in that somewhere in a situation that stressful, I would have a hard time uh, taking orders from a guy that hadn't done it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I don't know if that would be the same as you, like, but there, if, if the respect between the soldiers and the guys higher up the ranks, yeah. if it's there or it's something that you earn as you go or you just fucking it's still drilled into you to listen to what you're told that because anything else would be a mutiny right yeah so we had like during the year-long pre-deployment training you know who the good leaders are you know who the bad leaders are and you just you know you hope you get one of the good leaders right? yeah <laughs> you really don't get, you don't really don't have any rights say eh? no like Fuck. when we when we uh right before we left about i want to say less than two months before we left they did a battalion-wide drug test and a lot of people failed. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of guys, as a result, got punished and got kicked off going on tour, and they had to reshuffle everybody mm -hmm. all around. And I ended up getting switched from uh, the section that I was in with all my buddies. I'd been with these guys for a year, right? Like, I, I trusted all of them. We were basically a, the assault section. So whenever we, in training, whenever we did something, we were the ones, you know, kicking down the doors and all mm -hmm. that stuff, right? And I got moved to the rear, same platoon, different group of guys, but uh, they put me on the machine gun because between my friend Kevin and I, he was a better shot with the light machine gun, but I was stronger. 
Yeah, the goon. So they were like, okay, well, get it. we need the stronger guy to go with the heavier stuff, and we'll send the better shot with the lighter machine gun. So he stayed, and I left. So, sorry, what did, was it shuffling because you passed or failed the drug test? I passed. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. want to know. Like, no, you, there was no specification I wanted to know. Yeah. So. A lot of people were surprised. <laughs> <laughs> they tested for the wrong drugs. Yeah, that's yeah, all. They must have missed mine. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, uh, yeah, man. I, yeah, like I, like I just mentioned, I would have a hard time, I, even in what we do, like, I know I get a lot of respect from my guys because I've already done it. You know what I mean? Like, I, but they're not to say there's not great coaches that haven't performed at it yeah. at that level because there is. I know tons of stud coaches that have never fought, right? But it's just something there's an easy, it's easier to connect with guys who've already been through that bullshit and there's that respect, right? So just curious how it would be to try to take, you know, orders, not even instructions, orders from someone who hasn't been in it or maybe someone who's younger than you or, you know what yeah. I mean? Like uh, that, I would have a hard fucking time with that. But, and especially when you don't even get to really, in here, anyone can question me if they want to. I'll talk to you. Yeah. All right. And I might see something from a different point of view. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Try it like this instead. And that, and that life, you don't, there's, it's cut and dry, right? It's black yeah. and white. And that's how it is. Yeah. That would suck, man. I, I mentioned earlier, every fucking story you guys tell me, I'm like, why? Like, <laughs> no, man. Like, I don't want, I, it's like barely snowing out there. I don't like get my feet wet. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> fucking soft as shit. And you guys are hiking around the desert for months at a time with no water or booze or pussy or nothing. <laughs> Fuck, man. We got I, goats. I, <laughs> no internet, but we yeah. got goats. <laughs> um, do you still have, uh, do you still have a like, strong connection and like a lot of friends that you served with? Or is it something that grew apart when you came home? So... Unfortunately, a lot of like my close friends were killed yeah. in Afghanistan, and the ones that I did keep contact with, a lot of them have committed suicide. Yeah, you know it's a un uncomfortable reality of coming home, and the ones that I am in touch with, it's it's a short list, man. Yeah, yeah, it's such a hard. Um, the suicide rate is fucking incredible. Yeah, it's really sad. Yeah, it is, and yeah. it's what's sad is. You know, it's on the, it's a responsibility of you as a man going in, be especially, you kind of know, especially, it's only, you know what, it's only been really the last, like, couple decades where, like, Vietnam War vets were just shoved to the side when they were done. Yeah. Treated like dog shit. Yeah. Well, they were and drafted, that, right? Right. Like, if yeah. she didn't get choice in the first yeah. place. But, like, going in now, there's more research with PTSD and, and, uh, and a lot of those issues that soldiers have when they come home. So they, our government needs to take care, better care of their people when they, when they're done serving. But as also as a man, like going in, you kind of know life's going to change. Mm. Like, but I guess you don't know what, to what extent, how much, how crazy shit can be when you come home. Like when I, like you, it's your identity. I still have a friend. He's, he's 50. He, all he wants to go back is just go right to the front. He can't help himself because <laughs> no he just way. doesn't think of himself as anything but a soldier, right? Yeah. So it's uh, it's really hard for guys to come back and adapt to real life, and and then uh, yeah, it's like drugs and alcohol and all these escapes that you use, and yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's a shame. Or and the things that you've seen and people you've lost. That's a hard. That's hard. It's something that until you, I'll never know. Of course not. Yeah, that's not. But I have friends like you who I got to you know. And a couple other buddies that I'm like, they've explained it to me the best that you can without giving me too much. I'm like, fuck, man, how do you come back from something like that? So I actually think you're very well adjusted. <laughs> One right? day at a time. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. It's, it's really hard. Like yeah. you're, it's, you've seen some horrible things and your, your whole identity has changed, right? Yeah. It's tough. Um, but yeah, man, that sucks. Yeah. You go and put yourself in a situation where you're going to lose people. you you know you're gonna lose people you love. It's not. It's not if, man. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Right. You know, I was 24 when I went, so I I never even considered what it would be like coming home. Yeah. I never. I think never that's crossed my a mind. Big thing, right? right. Yeah. And uh, well, before I left, I I accepted and and truly believed that I was going to die over there. Mm -hmm. Like I wrote my goodbye letters to everybody that I loved, everybody that I cared about. And I didn't get one because we hadn't met yeah. yet. So <laughs> yeah. that's cool. Exactly. Uh, and that's actually really hard to do. It's like yeah, writing your own smart. writing your own obituary like 15 times. Well, you're that's you really get, yeah, you're getting yeah. in touch with your uh, mortality. That's yeah. for sure, right? Yeah, like, it was very, very difficult. I was I reflect on that a lot and it's it's I don't know, it's 
try it sometime. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you see what I'm talking ready. about. I'm not really <laughs> ready to go there yet. Yeah. Uh, um, do you do you have like do you think of yourself as a soldier or do you think of yourself as a dad or a husband or like how because you know what I mean? Because I know people the people that do come back with identity problems. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I definitely went through that. Um, especially I, I got involved in like politics and religion and atheism and all these things when I got back and going through psychological treatment and getting out of the military. So it was just this big melting pot of like, what the fuck am I going to become when this is over? Yeah. So and here I am now. So yeah. what I, I mean, I'm, I'm a family first kind of guy and don't fuck with me and everything will be fine. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, for sure. But you also, so you wouldn't, so you, how old are you now? Uh, 36, 37 when, this when year. Did, when did you get out? Uh, so 34, 35, somewhere around there. Really? Wow. Yeah. So my last four years in the military, I was a firefighter. Okay. Yeah. So the infantry was overborn. So meaning the government hired too many people. Mm -hmm. Surprise, right? So they opened up all the other trades that were underborn specifically to the infantry. And firefighter was on that list. They put my name in and I got picked. And where were you? I got sent to Barry, Base Borden. Okay. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Awful. I... I wish I never did it. Really? Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, some guys love it, but I was on a course with all infantry guys. And I think there was only two or three of them that hadn't been overseas specifically to Afghanistan. And I don't know what it was, but the, the firefighting instructors, I don't know if they were intimidated by us or, or what, but they fucking hated us. Man. <laughs> <laughs> and when everybody else was allowed to drive their cars to work on Friday as a recruit, we were marching. Really? Yeah, like they just, they were like, you, you're you not you are not in the army anymore. You're not a hot shot. And it's like, whoa. I remember sitting down and uh, when my wife was pregnant with her first child, I asked, you know, formal permission as a recruit to go to the ultrasound to determine the, the gender of the baby. And they're like, no, no, we have to wash fire trucks today. And I'm like, I we booked the appointment on a Friday afternoon as late as possible so that I could be there. And they're like, no, they're like, it's time to start sacrificing for your country. And I'm like, do you know who you're fucking talking to? Like, do you know what I've done? Like, like, oh, I was so mad. <laughs> I was still no get mad doubt. talking about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it was just this fucking guy who's probably never even left Canada himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's uh, because uh, anyone who had been and experienced what you had would have a little bit more understanding, right? Yeah. So for at least I'd like to think so. Fuck. But um, yeah, that was it for me. I mean, I was like, I couldn't wait to get out of firefighting. When I got there, like things I was dealing with from my tour started to come back because I quit drinking. Yeah. And then everything started to come to the surface, right? Yeah, you don't have that escape, right? Yeah. yeah. You have to confront your demons head on. Ooh, yeah. Uh, scary yeah. shit. Yeah, that's hard, man. Yeah. It's hard. But uh, like I said, you've done I've watched you i since I've known you. How long have I known you? Maybe five years? About that, that yeah. 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 So yeah, I met you on Cal Stammer and then you started. Yeah. So uh, here about three years. Yeah, ago. all right. We're we're weirder over here, so you just fit it in better. But like, so I've actually watched you progress, like, Thanks, you know, as a, and uh, yeah, we have some great conversations. You have a you have a really good understand, understanding for the shit that goes on in my brain as well, too, right? So, it's uh, it's nice to have you on, Mitch. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> did you? Was there someone in the service that you I like really latched onto and identified uh, to as uh, like a role model, or was there someone that you looked up to that like? There was nobody that I really looked up to, but there was two guys that uh, I really liked, like, soldiering with. Yeah. I guess you could say. But, but because of similarities or is it just respect? Or, uh, just respect. We were in the same section, you know, during morning physical training. Like, we were we were always trying to outbeat each other. Yeah. You know, like, if, like who could run 5K the fastest? Who could do the most push-ups after? Who, could, who was the better shot? You know, it was just very, very competitive. Yeah. How right? fast can you run 5K, Josh? I probably never even ran 5K. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, so, yeah, you got to, no matter what team or whatever, tribe or whatever, you got to find those people around that are going to bring the best out of you, right? And, sometimes yeah. it's a leader, sometimes it's a teammate, right? Yeah. Right, so. Not with them. Yeah, cool. Are yeah. they still with us? Uh, no, they were uh, unfortunately killed on the tour. Yeah, that's fucking sucks. Yeah. Um, hmm. Children in action. It was on Easter Sunday. I was there for, I guess, two months. And I mean, it's no coincidence that it happened on Easter Sunday, a Christian holiday. You're yeah, fighting yeah. Islamic extremists, right? Two and two is four. But uh, yeah, that was like the first. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like the, the first, you know, like like real war experience that I had. And unfortunately, it was six guys getting blown up in front of me. 
Fuck. This is my old section. I was that was the vehicle I was moved from, like two months, three months earlier. Like that that would have been me. But yeah. Like I said, I was telling the story earlier. I got switched. Because I was stronger to carry the heavier gun. Because you were on drugs. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you think they didn't test for testosterone, right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, man. Oh, that's, yeah. hor- that's horrible. That's horrible. Fuck- but, you know, I mean, um, it, this fucking cheesy as shit, but, you know, like every, everything kind of happens for a reason. Not to, not to, your friends didn't die for a reason, but you weren't in that. You yeah, know, you're, yeah, you're, you're here. Right, you uh, needed to come back here because you had uh, a wife to marry and two kids to have. You exactly. know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and it took a while to get over survival's survivor's guilt is a you know it's a real thing. Yeah, right? it's, yeah, no it's, doubt. It's, right? Yeah, could have, should have. You know what I mean? That's hard. That's hard. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, well, that day would change my life forever. Absolutely, oh. man. Oh man. Um, I I don't know why I'm surprised you know because I knew this was gonna yeah. get depressing at some point. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's like I'm gonna have Mitch in and maybe just fuck with him and see what happens. Yeah. And, no. Oh man, um, did you do you think those guys would change anything? Or are they if like they were be, still alive? It, well, like I mean, what you you said going over there, you said you you advised. Do you figure these guys had this similar process when they joined? Uh, I don't know, but um, I know. Th- a lot of them had more next to kin than I did. Yeah. You know? Like Aaron had a, it was his second tour and he had, his daughter was an infant. Fuck. Um, Donnie, Donnie was 29. He had, he, has, he had two boys that are the age of my boys now. And then uh, Stanix had a fiance, Poland. Poland was an only child. Greensleeve was an only child, but you know, it was, his parents, I mean, how do you take that news, right? Like, it's mm-hmm. it's terrible. It's life-changing. Yeah, that's fucking horrible. But, you know, um, yeah, like you said, survivor's guilt. I think that's what my other friend that's he, – he's lost so – because he's, he's like 50 now, so he's – and he went back a few times. And he's – I think his biggest thing is a lot of it is like he's lost so many people that he feels guilty that it was – almost wasn't him, you know yeah. what I mean? That he yeah, wasn't there. Yeah, through that, yeah. yeah. And people are like – I could have done this, could have done that. Like, the truth is, you couldn't have done anything. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's the hardest it. thing is to accept that none of it's under our control. Yeah. There's fucking wackos over there. Like, the truth is, and none of us should be there. No. The, world, the, no. world should just be a be- the world should just be a better <laughs> yeah. fucking place. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's not. I mean, I saw, like, being a frontline soldier, I, I saw and, and contributed to small changes on the ground. But, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's not worth the it. The wheel's still turning. Yeah, exactly. Right? Right? Yeah. Like, you know, the Taliban is stronger than ever. I'm always seeing on, on the news, you know, another suicide bombing and more infrastructure destroyed. And it's like, well, mm, job well done. You know, yeah. like, fuck. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, you know what? It's, it, yeah. Extremists are fucking, it's, they're, it's, it's, they're insane. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you can't reason with them. You never, when you find someone who believes in something so badly that they're willing to die and sacrifice, like, how are you ever going to win against that? He's, you know what I mean? Like I have ideas. Yeah. <laughs> True. You know what I mean? But like people, ha- haven't I, but to add to that, having ideas and having beliefs are two different yeah. things as well too. Not, I know what you're saying, but like yeah. when you, if someone 100% believes something, you can't change their mind. No. Right. And that's the way it is. And they're willing to fucking die for that shit. That's, that's why I like that. Like, but I, I see the, the middle, um, stuff like, uh, Religions from the Middle East. Well, actually, every other religion in the world except for Christ- Christianity, because Christ- and the, like they'll just change their minds. Dude, <laughs> like, like I'm not dying for shit. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? At least these guys mean. At least people like you know from the Muslim faith, and they're like they 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 will they 100 believe it. No matter like you got to kind of admire that in a way. Whereas us, I'm like. I want to be a good Christian, yeah. but it, it seems really uncomfortable. So I'm down with whatever you want to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, like they're not sacrificing shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't know. Yeah, there's but, not a lot of suicide bombers in Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, hey, listen. All North America, well, the United States anyway. Yeah. All their serial killers and extremists and yeah. all these wackos yeah. like Evangelist, their Tim- and their, yeah. or Timothy McVeigh's and shit. They're all. They're all white boys from the yeah, South, yeah, right? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Like, everyone, there's extremists in everything. Yeah, you know extremists, what it is? no, no and, skin uh, color, no prejudice, right? They're everywhere. Yeah, I had this, I was talking with someone last week about um, Ireland. 
it was Brandon Aria or Box Coach and how the, the North and the South and whatever else. Like we as people here in North America, we don't really put too much on the Civil War in Ireland because everyone's white. You know what I mean? It, it, it's true though, right? Like it's a, it's a like you come from Ireland and people are like, oh, you're from Ireland. If you come from the Middle East, you're like, oh, where are you from? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it's 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 a race thing where like people. It's still a civil war, whether it's in the Middle East or whether it's Ireland. It's exactly the same thing, but people don't pay attention to it because it's just a bunch of white people, and it's like they don't have real problems or something. Like those fuckers are blowing each other up too. Still, <laughs> you know what I mean? That shit ended years ago, and they're still blowing each other up and doing wild shit. Like, but yeah, guerrilla warfare. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, the world is a fucking terrifying place, man. Yeah, let's yeah. have kids and bring them into it. Yeah, <laughs> twice. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Like, ah. Would you, uh, I was going to say this question right to the end, but like, um, do you regret going into the military at all? Uh, no. I mean, that's a million dollar question, right? Yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't change a thing. Even if I could go back in time and tell myself not to do it, I wouldn't listen to me anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it made, it yeah. made, you are what you are, right? Yeah. It, made, it made you. Uh, the, when you went in, you said it was 9-11 mm-hmm. that kind of motivated you. Did yeah. you. Were you already thinking about it? beforehand or was that just like you I saw was that? uh my dad was trying to talk me into it but i was thinking more like uh like like i was thinking about joining the navy and being mm-hmm. like a weapons tech or oh, like, like a sailor that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh once the fighting started picking up it just it didn't feel right not to yeah to do you know to do that to go and fight i remember when i walked into the recruiting center and i was like yeah you know where do i sign for infantry and the guy's looking at me like Are you fucking serious he's like you know watch the news man <laughs> Yeah. They're trying to talk you out of it. They were, crazy. yeah. Because when I did my my military testing, I got to pick from any trade that I wanted, which I guess is not common. So it goes to show you how easy the testing is if mm. I aced it. But uh, they were trying to talk. They had a shortage of dentist, and he's like, "Would you like to be a dentist?" He's like, "You know, in ten years, you could be out, you fulfill your contract, you start your own practice, and you know, live a comfortable life." Like, I don't want to do that, man. I was like, I want to send people to the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But if there is a lot of people that go in based on like the education you can get and come out yeah. with on the side. But if if you go in there and then as so you go through infantry or something like that, there's not the same opportunity when you come home, right? Oh but, no, no. There's nothing for for a grunt, right? Like, but even though even still like well, I guess you could go I said I don't know much about it, but I know people that have gone over and they're like a they're some sort of airplane mechanic and whatever else and they'll never see anything because they're just sitting on the ground working on fucking planes yeah there's only like five or six trades in the entire military that we'll see combat obviously special forces is Mm -hmm. one of them infantry uh tankers combat engineers is a big one some medics because they attach a medic per platoon sometimes too and then uh, i guess you could count the artillery in there but they're usually like 20 25 kilometers away from where the the fighting might be yeah you know yeah so but i mean yeah you could go through and get your education come out the other side just fine but at the same time it could all go to shit real quick when because the world changes so fast you know what i mean yeah. like, things escalate like out of control like we're we've been sitting over in the middle east for how many years now you know what i mean like a lot and it doesn't look <laughs> like it's gonna they're like oh we're gonna pull out this many troops this year and do this and i'm like uh, mm, no yeah. we're not we're gonna pull out twenty five thousand and send in five thousand private security yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i've friend it does yeah. private security too and like he's got i'm gonna get him on here man. Fuck man, it's insane the yeah. shit that the guys tell he's telling me, and he's right open with this stuff too. I'm like, you're you guys are all out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Like, it, it's yeah. uh oh man. Um, so when you came back and uh, it did it take you a long time to kind of find your stride back in life when you became a civilian again? Years. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean it's still a struggle, right? But um, for the most part, I'm over over the over the hump. I guess yeah. you could say. But. Yeah, fuck, man. There's some scary times. Like, I remember hallucinating and like seeing ghosts and nightmares and just tons of shit. Like, I understand why why people snap and break and do stupid things and life changing things or commit suicide. Like, I like I get it. Mm-hmm. You know, I can totally understand why they why that stuff happens to those to those people. But, but did it, like getting getting back into the like the real world was that like uh was that through like 
what helped you the most? Like, cause I know, I'm sure you go through all sorts of like therapies and like, you know what I mean? Like getting back on the ground yeah. It, yeah. or what, do you feel that it was other people helping you out in systems in place? Or do you feel that it's like a lot of strategies that you put in place for your, yourself that's made you kind of adapt a little better? Mostly, I guess it all falls on me. You, right? Yeah. It's, it's all, ownership at the end. Right. But it's not like, you know, toughness or overcoming adversity or anything. This is just more or less just too fucking stubborn. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, there was there was one thing that I still carry to this day. Um, the first Remembrance Day when I got back, um, one of my friends that was killed, his parents asked me to come to their house for Remembrance Day. They were they invited a select few, and I, I obviously agreed. And <clears throat> I went there and we were doing our thing, sharing stories, celebrating life. And um, they asked to speak to me. They, they asked if I would come upstairs, and I sat down on. Their, you know, their late son's bed, and she had the silver cross on, which is what they give mothers who have lost their children to war. And I just remember sitting there on his bed, and it was so, so such an odd, eerie feeling. And her and her husband asked me, they're like, we, we understand you were there when our son was killed, and we want to know how he was, how his final moments were. So, you know. Jesus. Yeah, so I told them. It, it was a bomb blast, so it was quick. They did you know, literally just like that. But she told me, she said, look, a lot of you guys aren't going to be able to deal with what's coming, the consequences of going there and seeing that stuff. And she said, whatever you do, don't give the Taliban another victory. Fuck, and fuck yeah. that, that just stuck with me. Cause I hate those fuckers. You know? <laughs> How can you not, man? Yeah. Hate's an awful thing, uh, you know. Uh, what I mean? But but you know, like that, and that's what they're that's what they're feeding on as well. It's hate and fear. Exactly. But uh, yeah. man, you're a human being, yeah. and they did some horrible shit. And yeah, and it's not even what they did to like my buddies. It's what they did to their own people who they deemed weren't you know religious enough, right? Mm -hmm. Like going through those villages and seeing those women who were victims of the Sharia, like Islamic law, and you know this. I remember the first time I saw a woman who had acid all over her face, like Jesus. the scars. I asked the interpreter, I'm like, because everybody's wearing a burqa, mm -hmm. the face covering, except for this girl. I'm like, why? I asked the interpreter, I'm like, what's going on here? Why Why has everybody got their face covered, but this girl who has vicious scars all over her face they has want, her face? Because they want people they want, to see Yeah, it. they want to see it. It's the punishment, right? I was like, oh, okay, well, let's go find those fuckers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man, but, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, do you miss uh, the camaraderie of the military? Uh, yeah, a bit. Yeah, but after the, my close friends were killed, I kind of shut that off. Yeah. You know, I didn't really make a lot of friends after that. I didn't, maybe I just didn't want to lose again. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I know. I know. Actually, I know uh, jiu-jitsu is becoming, like, massive for ex-military guys. You yeah. know what I mean? Because they come back. A lot of guys go into that situation because they don't have a strong family background or they're coming from like an inner city or whatever like a lot of different scenarios for you to join up in the first place right but like i i know i've talked to a lot of guys and it is come very popular that this is jiu-jitsu is like kind of one of those things where you can jump in you know get your adrenaline go on around and be surrounded get your get your fix and still be around people that you trust all the time you yeah. know what i mean so yeah i definitely made some good friends here yeah and uh in strength and it's again there's a few hours a week where you, no matter what you're going through you come in here and someone's trying to fucking strangle you for an hour you don't have time to think about other <laughs> shit too yeah. right so physical activity and keeping your mind busy and, and the the friendships that you can make in an environment like jiu-jitsu are pretty fucking massive and I, I think for people that are struggling with anything it's probably good for your soul you know what i mean yeah so, it keeps me coming here weekly for sure well as like you look at the look at the other options right like <laughs> You can go to the pub three days a week, or your mm -hmm. wife's like, "Dude, go do some fucking jujitsu." Like, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're, you know, you're going crazy. Your guts get so big, you can't see your dick anymore. Which means I don't want to look at it. You, know, you can get your ass to the gym, right? So yeah. there's a million reasons to be in here, but it, it does seem to be like a growing thing with with, uh, you know, soldiers and that guys are there, and, and as well as uh, like uh, PTSD as well. Like, yeah, if you can. Because jiu-jitsu is constantly uncomfortable. So you can train yourself. It is, right? It's a horrible yeah. fucking thing. So you can train yourself to be in that uncomfortable position, being smothered and beat up and whatever else, and, like, train yourself to be there without panicking. You yeah. know what I mean? That's Deal with it. Yeah. So I think there's, like, there's a million reasons for everyone to do jiu-jitsu. But I think for guys that are coming and have, you know, 
have lost have have you know losses there in PTSD and things like that. I think it's fucking awesome for them, right? Yeah. But, I think it's our uh, I think it's the soldier's ability to endure. I think it you know it settles that. Yeah. It, you know it scratches that itch almost. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. It's uh man, I'm. I love suffering. Mm, yeah, it's weird, it's right? yeah. Up. Like <laughs> I constantly have to do something that makes me feel like dog shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but I, now I'm just so banged up. Like I have to get warmed up just to have someone beat me up yeah. to feel like <laughs> shit afterwards, or I don't feel right. I don't know. It's a really lengthy process now. <laughs> just getting warmed up now is such a pain in the ass. Like I can't imagine. Like I know, I know my buddy. He, uh, just years and years. Like, can you imagine? I piss and moan about injuries, and chronic pain i'm like can you imagine carrying around 100 pounds for 10 years yeah you can <laughs> <laughs> that would fuck it you imagine how your body would feel like I'm, uh, i carry my my backpack in here and i'm all mad because it's got two geese in it and, <laughs> right now you can't hauling around a machine gun with all sorts of oh, shit oh man my back and my knees are still sore oh, for sure. <laughs> i my friend now is like he has a hard time running if he's not wearing boots because it's just in his fucking head yeah. you know what i mean like so is there anything you like really miss about it uh, no, not no. Really. no. <laughs> you know, you're like, no, there wasn't a specific meal. <laughs> no, God, no. <laughs> Eating out of a goddamn bag. Oh, oh, man, this shit was brutal. Oh, for sure. I'd rather eat it out of the garbage. Uh, <laughs> fuck. So, was there, what was, um, what, what was the final straw that made you just say, fuck this, I want out? Like, was there an incident that happened? Or was it loss of friends or was it just. Yeah. So, I guess, so all that stuff contributed, but I guess, like, the straw that broke the camel's back, um, it was about six months in. I was right at the end of my tour, and we were doing patrols up and down the same road. We were either we were either going in through entrance A and coming out B, or vice versa, which completely contradicted all of our uh, IED training because you're not supposed to set patterns. Right. If you set patterns, you're going to die. That's yeah. just plain and simple. That's how it goes. They come in. You walk in point A and they know you're coming to point B. They slide a bomb in there somewhere. And they know you're coming that way. They come up behind you once they step on the bomb. And then, you know, you're, you're attacked from the front and the rear and the side. Now you're fucked. Now everybody's dying. Mm -hmm. And it was it was just, it was completely retarded. We're like, why are we doing this? This is, this goes against everything we were taught. But one of the commanding officers, uh, while this was going on, he came down and he gave orders. And he said, from now on, if you're not in range of the enemy's small arms, you can't engage. So I'll break that down for you. So what that means, so common weapons of the Taliban are like shoulder fire rockets mm -hmm. and uh, rifles. So they're good for about, we'll say 300 meters, argument's sake. So if they're 500 meters away, they can't hit me. But if I'm sitting in the gunner hatch, which reaches 2.4 kilometers, I can't kill them because they can't return fire. Yeah, like there's rules for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that fucked up? Yeah, oh, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. So I was, and I remember we went out, we were doing a patrol, and we were going down this road again, and they're like, take up a firing position. And I was, I just, I sat down with my legs out straight and my rifle on my lap. I looked like a, a kid in a sandbox who lost his mom, you know? <laughs> my sleeves were unrolled, which is a big, like, uniform no no, smoking a butt. And my superior, he looks at me, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I'm done, man. I'm like, this is retarded. I'm like, how are we even still alive? Like, even if I see somebody, I can't shoot them. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are we even doing this for? Like, why do we even have weapons with us right now? Why am I carrying all this gear if I can't use it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was it. I said, I'm never going to come back uh, unless I'm special forces. And I tried out for that twice, which is a whole other complete story awesome story first time i tried out i didn't finish it second time i tried out for a different special forces unit finished the seven day hell week but didn't get picked so i was like that's it i'm done with the army i'm mm. done uh, see you later pick firefighting got got accepted and off i went what 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 uh what made you want to do special forces you just like wanted to up the ante a little bit or yeah. like yeah yeah they less rules right well at least from yeah how anyway, I so okay so how give me the process like how the fuck do you try out for special forces can i yeah. I think actually sure. I read an article they're, they're opening up to anybody you can just walk in off the street similar to how the Americans do things it's mm -hmm. a process it's a long process yeah, yeah of course but, but when I did it it was um, you had to be in the military for a minimum of two years you had to pass a physical fitness test you had to get a certain you couldn't just pass it you had to get a certain score yeah uh, you had to get written recommendations from 
all of your superiors, like five people, the base commanding officer had to sign off on it. It went to a board, the Special Forces Board Committee, whoever they are, and they say yes or no. And if they say yes, you get invited to come and try out for, at the time, it was seven days, as they call it, selection. Mm -hmm. just, that's, just how, that's just how it's known in the military, selection. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, you do your seven-day hell week, and, and if you pass, if you do well enough, like just finishing it doesn't guarantee you a spot. You have to you have to meet whatever their standard is, and uh, if you get picked to continue on, you usually go on about uh, anywhere from eight months to a year course, and if you pass that course, then you're you're in. Is the Hell Week like similar to what kind of what the Americans do with their Navy so, SEAL sort of thing? Or so the uh, Hell Week that I did would be comparable to like uh, the U.S. Rangers or U.S. Green Berets. Sucks. Oh, it's terrible. Like, yeah. give me... <laughs> you can't just leave it break some shit down for me. Like. So, they, uh, so they test all your phobias. Claustrophobia, heights, water, which is that terrible. Yeah, yeah, that sounds horrible already. <laughs> Everything you just said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hat, yeah, hat uh, water, I thought the water was going to be the worst one, so I spent a lot of time training for the water. I was swimming mm -hmm. three, sometimes four times a week, and uh, it actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It sucked. We lost some guys. Some guys quit. One guy drowned, but... They he revived. They got revived. Obviously, like, yeah, they didn't it doesn't die. Even, doesn't even count then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it went on for about I think the water six to eight hours, if I remember correctly. Just didn't fucking end. <laughs> <laughs> Just water harassment. Yeah. So they. Uh, so when you start, you're in the locker room. You're not allowed to talk. You're you're constantly in a stress position while you're waiting mm -hmm. for something. And this stress position was sitting cross-legged. Which is it's, actually it's pretty fucking it's hard. Pretty when hard when yeah. you when you're doing it for hours, right? So they come in and they grab you and you put on this like standard infantry fighting vest and hold your magazines, your grenades, stuff like that. But they fill it with weights, and uh, probably I have to guess about probably 50, 60 pounds. And they give you a gas mask and it's all blacked out, so you can't see shit. And uh, he's like, "All right, my number was twenty five because they don't call you by your name." And they're like, "All right, number twenty five, follow my instructions." And they go on this huge rant and you don't know shit. And they're like, you have any questions? And you always ask a question. And they go, what were the instructions given to you? <laughs> and you go, you fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, all right, we're going to go. And he puts his hand on my shoulder. And, you know, I'm in, like, I know I'm in a pool, right? Like, mm -hmm. I know it's there. And he's like, all right, turn left. And then I'll turn left. And he'll push me right into a wall. And he's just fucking with me, like, the whole walk. And I, stand, I finally stand up on the diving block. Gives me a rubber rifle. And he's like, all right, on the, count of, on the word command, go. You're going to take a deep breath, hop down, do what comes naturally. And I'm like, okay. He's like, go. I jump in, sink to the bottom right away. Take off my mask so I can see. Take off my vest because you can't swim with that shit. Grab my rifle and come to the top because you can't fight without your rifle. He looks at me. He's like, all right, pass. Keep going. And I go over and then there's like this weird contraption chair. They strap you into this chair and they're like, okay, you, uh, you got to come out on the glow stick side. So I, they flip you over. That you're not, you're I didn't, like, they don't give you any fucking time. Like, there's no, there's no, they're not being nice about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole thing's a scramble, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm upside down in the pool. I obviously didn't get enough air because I'm sort of like, oh, fuck, this is brutal. Like, I'm going to drown in this fucking thing. I don't even know how to take it off. They didn't tell me how to take it off. I'm waiting for this glow stick to come down. And I see it come down on my right side. And I panically take this thing off and come out on the glow stick side. And he's like, all right, good, you pass, get out. And then they, threw us all in the pool and we just did PT for hours with weights and PT uh, physical training yeah. yeah that's what they call it man. and it just went on forever push ups dips burpees duck walks or duck dives so they just hand weights around the circle and the weights get heavier and they tell you to keep it dry and they yell at you when it gets wet and you get out of the pool I told you not to get that wet give me 25 push ups I didn't count 25 do 25 again so you're like fuck <laughs> it just doesn't end <laughs> You know, yeah. it's crazy because it, it uh, and that was day three. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's that you can sign up in the yeah. states and all sorts of places to go do like Hell Week. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's a simulation of like. I'm like, why the fuck would anyone choose that? Yeah, some next level hazing. Yeah, <laughs> like why would you sign up? Like and to say you're not even get like you're just doing it. It's like a hobby. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the no. Yeah. Like there's nothing you get nothing out of that. Yeah. You know, like you tell people you did it. I'm like, well, you're guess what? You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can think of a million things I'd rather do than have someone throw me in a pool with a weight vest on. Yeah. 
or, or blinded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, fucking thanks, man. Yeah. So, and yeah, that, you said that was day three. So that does, does the week progressively get worse or is it yeah, like so, you're just always changing shit on you? Yeah. So I noticed, so the, obviously it, the, the testing gets longer, the rests get shorter, the sleep gets less and less, the meal times get less and less. So by the end of it, like day seven was oh, like 25, 30, 30 kilometer ruck march about 120 pound ranger ruck on seven days like no sleep you're tired you're exhausted i remember when we stepped off i like i because it's pitch black because it's a night move and the instructor who was with us i like stepped in a hole and kind of twisted my ankle and he's like oh fuck you're in for a long night bud <laughs> 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 and i was oh man it was brutal every what? every like five or six kilometers we got somewhere and they had they had something for us could be something simple, like, you know, as a team, find this object, like a simulated plane crash, you have to find a, the black box mm. or uh, take this casualty from point A to point B, and it's retarded heavy, like 300 pounds. They just weight it down with extra shit. And then they'll say, okay, you failed, you suck. Here's your next point from A to B. Uh, it's a little further, and you have less time. Go. <laughs> So you get there late, and they you pay for it for yeah. being late, you know, whatever it is, burpees or something. It's uncomfortable. And then, okay, you fail. Uh, this is where you're going. It's a little longer, and you have less time to get there. Go. And you just we did that about six times. And then finally the sun started coming up. And remember at the very end, my feet were obviously blistered to fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were terrible. And I was just hobbling along, just... 100 pound ruck on rubber rifle I was like oh fuck my life man <laughs> when is this gonna end and the instructor was looking at me and he's like you gonna quit 25 I'm like fuck no man like this is gonna end any minute and he's like oh you think so I'm like uh <laughs> <laughs> so uh he's like all right let's go and he picks up the pace the next thing you know I'm like shuffling and I'm running and I'm like oh man this fucking guy is gonna run me until I puke he's like, you gonna quit 25 I'm like no Oh, and it was going and going. We did that for about 15 minutes. He's like, 25. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I got good news for you. I'm like, what? And he's like, selection ended about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> were, there, uh, were there people in that environment that, like, excelled? Like, you could tell that's what they were fucking supposed to oh, do? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I went there with 10 guys from my, 10 guys from my unit tried out that year. Um, that was, sorry, 10 guys got approved to go and try out. Mm. There was a bunch that's asked they to went go for it. Yeah, yeah. they just they didn't do well enough for whatever reason so of those 10 i think i want to oh, i want to say seven passed like finished it mm -hmm. and of those seven they picked five to go and of the five that went on the course only one finished mm -hmm. did, did you pick him from the get-go to be the one that finished that or what no, 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 no. It was actually kind of weird because when they released when they released the list of people who got to go to our battalions and then you know put it up on the board and everybody checks to see if they made the cut. There was a lot of us who were like, "Did they get the list backwards?" Really? Yeah, yeah because there were some people that I was really good friends with that I was like, "Man, like you couldn't tie your own shoes without instructions." Like, yeah. <laughs> like how the fuck did you get picked? Yeah. But, but they're you know I don't know what the criteria is. They're looking for people, and I didn't have what they were looking for. Yeah. So. So it, let's say uh, I'm, I'm assuming that military is a shit ton of politics, oh, God, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but at the same time, like when you're finding something like that, they, don't they want the best man for the job or is it who, one of those things that it's who you know? You know what I mean? Cause, like, I, I, I have no idea. Hmm. Uh, I have no idea how they pick it. All I know is uh, when I got my, you know, sorry you didn't make the cut letter or you know, your polite regret, re, uh, polite rejection letter. Yeah. They said I could try out again in two years. And the word on the street at the time was two years was failed for psychological reasons. Awesome. Good so, for you. Good for you. And I was, I only been home for about a year and a half from Afghanistan and mm. I had a ton of fucking psych paperwork on me. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, but I mean, like, let's say every day, like soldier life, like when you're climbing out, climbing through the ranks, is that, is that best man for the job or is that who you know? You know what I mean? Uh, like, I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's some there's some leaders who are, you know, switched on, as we would say, in mm -hmm. the Army. And they want the best man for the job. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. But then there's then there's not. Yeah. <laughs> right? It could be time in and, or who you know and whatever else, yeah. right? So. Yeah. Because, it, but imagine uh, it's got, I would, I would like to think, especially when this 
circumstances are so extreme that like the cream would kind of rise, rise to the crop, right? Yeah. Uh, cr like cream would rise to the top, you know what I mean? Because like there's people's lives at risk. It should shouldn't be like who you know. Yeah. It be, I mean that's a big problem with like in the in the business world, it's kind of who you know be, because yep. there's not lives at risk. It's money, which yeah. is very similar which is like more important to some people yeah i know no. problem with the world yeah right but it's and uh i know for me personally like if i have a situation like that when we're going into battle or whatever else or someone's in someone has my life is someone else's responsibility i'm like i don't give a fuck you know <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd be the best man for the job right it's yeah. just seeing with policing and firefighting and shit like that now too like you i don't know what it's like now but there was like it was years and years ago where there's kind of affirmative action where you had to hire uh people of different oh uh, yeah yeah that's the minority thing yeah, 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 like yeah. A, and a certain amount of women and whatever i'm like i'm all and i'm all for equal rights whether it's whether you're black or white or purple or man or woman like it should be the best person for the gig no matter fucking what it is yeah. so right? when i was in the infantry it was the most diverse group of people i've ever worked with mm -hmm. but there was a, a standard like if you wanted to get on a course you had to meet you had to meet the standard for that. Like, it yeah. wasn't like, okay, well, we need, you know, we need six white people, three black people, two Mexicans. It, w it wasn't like that. Yeah. It was, here. here's the requirements, and if you meet these, we'll consider you. Yeah. You know? That's the way it should be. Yeah. Blind right? merit, I think they call it. Is that the correct Dan term? Merit? <laughs> Dan merit. Dan <laughs> merit. Blind merit. Yeah. <laughs> Dan uh, merit, the, I love the, you. <laughs> the world should be like that, right? It shouldn't, you shouldn't just, it should be, it should be based on performance mm -hmm. and loyalty and all the other things that come with being a proper leader. Yeah. Right? Like, it's just, there's nothing worse that, I, I've been, especially in this world, this industry in martial arts, the martial arts kind of planet we live in, like, I'll go into a gym and listen to someone speak or someone who's in charge, and I can tell, like, these guys, it's not that they don't, not, re, they don't, it's not that they don't respect, like, there's certain people you can leave in charge of a class or whatever, and people are like, yeah, dude, whatever you say. And then there's people you leave in charge, and people are like, eh, whatever you say. Yeah, you boss know? and leader. Yeah, yeah, right? So I want the best guy for the job, but you also got to have that. If you earn the respect of your people, then it's no problem if you be the leader, right? You shouldn't mm -hmm. just be up there because you know someone or admit, meet the qualifications and earn the respect of your people and be when the I leader. Was my, on my tour, the platoon commander I had, he got uh, the officer of the tour award or whatever it was called, best leader. So I got lucky with that because mm. he was pretty switched on. He was actually a year younger than me too, which yeah. a lot of people held that against him going over there. But he, you know, he rose to the occasion. Yeah. Fuck you know? man, I don't know. He, I actually got an award too. I got a top soldier award. Did you? Yeah, for proving myself under combat conditions. Fuck. Yeah. You want to break it down? What happened? Or you just uh, good so basically, um, out of the pool of like 100 and 120 soldiers, privates and corporals. Um, at the end of the tour, all of the immediate like supervisors, I guess, managers, I guess you could say, they had to pick somebody in their section, about 10 guys, and they had to uh, pick a candidate and say why that person deserved the award. So out of the 120, myself and another guy got picked, and we both got it. Cool. Yeah, and it was just uh, work ethic from start to finish of the tour, you know, going above and beyond, proving, proving yourself in combat, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, potential leadership. Only potential, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not going to... We, he could be. We're not going to give him an opportunity, yeah. though. Yeah. Just Achieve in case. The, uh, Just in case. Minimum standard with maximum supervision. <laughs> uh, are you from a military family? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Was your dad in? Uh, or, not or really. A reserve, like a uh, Coast Guard, Navy reserves, kind of. I'm um, the only one who joined the infantry in my family. My mm -hmm. cousin on my mom's side is combat engineer. Ran over a landmine in Ethiopia, if I'm not mistaken. Jeez. I think it was Ethiopia, somewhere in Africa. Uh, anyway, um, my other cousin was an electrician. His dad's an electrician. I guess the only other, like, combat trade guys would have been the combat engineer and artillery. That's what it was. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, what, sir, what's the difference between artillery and infantry? So infantry shooting rifles on the front line. You're on the ground, yeah. Yeah, and artillery is, you know, firing bombs 25k away. Okay. On, in front of the guys on the ground. 
<laughs> yeah, I like that job better. That sounds yeah. way cooler to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think uh, so going back to the military family thing, I think that's like a big American thing. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, for sure. Right? Like, yeah. you're every gen because those guys are always at fucking war too. They get yeah. to pick, yeah. right? Yeah. But my my great 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 was in the Civil War, and my his father was in what one and two, uh, and then the Alamo. And, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alamo. I went to the Alamo last remember. year, <laughs> and then uh, and then there's <laughs> Korea and Vietnam. Like those guys, and now the Middle East, all over the fucking Middle East, right? And then oh yeah, and, like there's uh, there's there's a lot of opportunity to. to to join the family uh, family business, I guess, yeah. when you're living in a country yeah, my, like... Actually, my brother's in. He's in a, a special unit. Like, he does... Uh, actually, you know what? I probably shouldn't even say this, so we'll just move you on. You don't even have a brother. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I get... Like I said, the family tree, but like I watched what, what my dad did. Like, my dad was a cabinet maker, a real hardworking guy, and I'm watching him bust his ass. Like, I'm like... No, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm like that's the last thing I want to do is the same the shit that my dad did, and I hope I hope my son doesn't want to do this job, man. I'm like, <laughs> as far as like my dad going overseas and like or grandparents going overseas and going to war, I'm like, Ugh. they didn't do a six month tour. They were there until it was over. Yeah, yeah. Can you, and, yeah. and a draft, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Vietnam was a draft. Every every, other, <laughs> every war was a fucking draft yeah. until this one. I think uh, World War Two was was both, wasn't it? It was conscript and draft well, the, as well as volunteer, like yeah. paratroopers were volunteers yeah. and. And the Americans were running up, yeah. lining up, fucking because they wanted to go and defend yeah. their country. I'm like, yeah. I don't know how to break it to you guys. Yeah. You're not really defending yeah. your country. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 it's you just joining the wheel, man. Yeah. Like the machine. Fresh meat for the grinder. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's, but man, the world's. My dad explained it to me one, and he's like, because my my father was an orphan because his parents his parents actually died, uh, right at the end of when the Russians, the Russian campaign against Germany. So right when World War II was ending, his dad was a conductor and his mom was something either way. So my dad was left an orphan. So he had a real hard life growing up in orphanages yeah, and this and that. Yeah. And, but he was telling when, when, uh, well, I think we, when they went to Kuwait in the early nineties or whatever, Saddam Hussein and everything yeah. else, right? And, uh. Desert Storm 1. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and he was breaking that. He's like, dude, there's fucking maniacs in the world. And if, Outside people forces don't step up and do something that's going to spread like cancer, and then you turn and it turns into a world war. I say, no, it's horrible. You shouldn't have to go into other people's country and help them through their bullshit and this and that. But if you don't, like, then yeah. the next country's involved, yeah. the next country's involved, and people that can't de defend themselves, and like, that's yeah. how like, Hitler and everyone else, like, yeah. this is how these things happen. It spreads like cancer, and now the whole world's at war. He's like, it sucks, but you got to take these fucking assholes out. Yeah. You know what I mean, if someone would have took Hitler out in the fucking first place. Before his propaganda grew into something so insane that the whole world got involved, you know what I mean? The world might be a different place, right? And it's the same thing with Sudan. Like, they're like, it's got to be done, right? There's, but, you know. Never ends, man. Never There's always ends, a war. If you look at it from their perspective, we're the tyrants, right? So yeah. It's, yeah. It's war. So there's always <laughs> yeah. a right and a wrong. And it's that all perspective as well. Yeah. Either way, war is a horrible, horrible fucking thing. It and, is. Uh, and it's, but it's. And it's, not even, it's not even like just the like the fighting like they're killing each other it's it's things that like people don't th really think about like, I'll give you an example uh, when the vehicle was blown up on Easter and only six soldiers were killed we had to clean that up mm -hmm. like we can't oh we you, should you, they don't stay there like we're out in the middle of nowhere like you have to you have to remove the dead you have to get the vehicle like that's a that's a process mm -hmm. Like it's it's not like a Hollywood movie where okay you know cut and you never see that scene again right no no there's you're on cleanup and yeah. and then and then and clean up on the you know then there's mourning and grief and they, like oh, stuff yeah. shit you guys suffer through it someone's got to go someone's got to go home and tell their parents and then they got to deal with it forever and tell their kids and yeah. this and that like it's just mm -hmm. never ending never ending never ending and then someone else signs back up and we go yeah. back at it again yeah we were there for hours doing that that, Fuck. that cleanup. It was terrible. I remember, like, I was actually inside the remains of the vehicle because where the they sit, it's like two benches facing each other, mm -hmm. and it was two anti tank mines on top of a 105 millimeter artillery shell. It was the biggest IED in Afghanistan at the time that had gone off, and obviously it did a ton of damage, killed six people, and destroyed a vehicle. But it like it kind of I don't know really how to describe it, like. Like a can had been punctured through with all the 
jagged metal everywhere, all mm-hmm. the armor and shit. And myself and another guy were standing in there, handing out the gear that was left. Because, like I said, you can't leave that stuff there. That's mm-hmm. that's intelligence. That's mission essential stuff. That's weapons. It's maps. I remember handing it all out and like blood all over it. And I remember I looked where where I used to always where I used to always sit in that lab. Kevin and I used to fight over that seat all the time, and Kevin was sitting there, and it was just, it was all over the wall, whatever whatever it was, his, his fucking blood and brains and all that shit, all the remains. But I remember what really hit me the hardest when I was doing that was once we handed out all the Mission Essential stuff, we had just done a mail run. I was just talking to Kevin like 20 minutes before this happened. We were going to eat lunch together, and... They, they had brought all their mail that they had got home to the lab, but then we got called out to go. And I remember grabbing the mail and it like just fucking crushed me psychologically. I was like, they didn't even open it. Like I got blood and remains and brains all over this package. And I just, it just killed me. Like it just, just broke my heart for that. Was, that was the straw that broke the camel's back on the, on the whole incident, right? The whole mass murder. I remember the medic looking at me and he's like, are you all right? And I was like, oh my God. I was like, the mail, the mail. I was like, what are we going to do with the fucking mail? And he's like, calm down. Like, (laughs) you know, get a grip. You know, and I I did. I took a breath and I got it. But it was just such a tragedy, such a, like a, a waste, you know. Six guys died. People lost their fathers, their brothers, their sons. So many guys from that that one day there were so many guys who got out after that there's so many guys who you know left that in their suicide notes that day and the guy I was in there with cleaning everything out last I heard he like ran away to a cabin in the woods and no one's heard from him since and that was was, we were only there for two months like shit got worse after that yeah like fuck there was no no shortage of dismembered bodies orphans Sharia villages and or sorry, Sharia victims and child rape. Oh God, that's like common there, man. Oh, I know. I had I like, have a friend that was he's in private sector now, but he's he's telling me that like you pretty much watch the shit go down and you can't do anything. Oh. He's like, you got a guy in your sights, it's like, uh, and yeah, you, and you just got to let it happen. Yeah, because it's like um, it's like human rights. Like what? Yeah, what fucking what human the fuck, rights, man? Yeah, fuck according. that, kill him. Yeah, right. But that's like a thing there. Yeah, the first, when I f- first got, you know, ex- exposed to that, um, being the platoon commander's bodyguard on the front, the first uh, Afghan police checkpoint we went to, I remember, like, you know, I'm doing my bodyguard thing, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and he's talking to the police commander, and there's a kid sitting on what, what we would call the front porch, it's definitely not a front porch, and I'm looking at him, it's got, like, a weird vibe from him, you know, you know, you just trust your instinct, right? So I, like, I go up to him, investigate. And he's sitting there cross-legged and he's got something between his legs. And I'm like, I'm looking down at this kid and he looks up at me and he gives me this smile and he's got this hillbilly smile, all these missing teeth and he's got feathers in his teeth, what, what teeth he has left. And I look in his hand and he's got a bird. He's been biting bird heads off, spitting out the heads and putting the, the remaining car. He had like fucking a dozen dead birds in his lap. And I looked at him and I'm like, what in the fuck am I looking at here? You know, and the longer I looked at him, the more I realized this kid had like developmental issues mm-hmm. like he wasn't all there and, and he had nail polish on and that stuck out so I just like shake it off I'm like he's not a threat whatever go back do my thing we're walking out and I asked the interpreter I'm like what's with the kid why does he have nail polish on like what's going on here and he's like that's uh that's their woman I'm like what do you mean what do you mean that's their woman like and he's like well uh, he's like uh that's what they fuck I was like what all of them and he's like yeah I'm like, there's like 12 dudes there and he's like yeah I mean that was the first that was the first checkpoint, and we went to about 10, 10 or 11 more that day. All the same thing. Some more noticeable than others. I was like, what the fuck is going on here, man? Yeah, like, it was explained to me that the women are for reproduction, and yeah. they have their... I remember talking to them, and I'm like, do you guys not have sex with women? And they look at you like, what? Like, <laughs> like they look at you weird, like you're some kind of sicko oh, I'm like man like, like you're literally like 12 of you are literally taking turns you know banging this 8 year old kid this boy like what the fuck is wrong with you and of course that creates an internal conflict because you've got you know other Canadian soldiers there who are who are dads 
and have young kids at home. And they're like, I'm not working with this. I'm not training this fucking guy how to shoot. The guy rapes kids every night. Like, and then there's that. That then there, that now that's a big problem that you have to deal with internally, right? You know, fuck. I want to. I want to fucking shoot people now. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, yeah, it's man. pretty fucked up. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, it's definitely something a lot of people don't like to talk about. And then, of course, the Army came out and said that that wasn't true and they never never knew about that. And it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You've got thousands yeah. of people telling you that it was. Yeah, and you got to sit there and fight. Like, it's not, you don't have the right to fucking do anything. Yeah. That's uh, fucked, man. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I don't know yeah, it's really gross. But, it, you know, and that's not even war-related. That's just their culture. That's just how they do things there. You know? Yeah. No. That's not like a consequence of, you know, Western intervention or anything. That's just the way they are. It's it's pretty fucked up, man. Pretty fucked up. So yeah. let's get away from that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's getting, a, getting a little too rapey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, uh, horrible, uh, man. Like uh, You invited yeah. me here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what I was signing up for. Uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, the world is a fucking terrifying place, man. Yeah. We just need, and whatever. Mm-hmm. You got to uh, just live your own life to the best of your ability and try to take care of each other and don't do wild shit, man. Yeah. Or, yeah, but mm-hmm. kind of do wild shit at the same time. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, fuck. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a high note to go to yeah. work on here. Kind of I do have one random question. And uh, with all your experience and your perspective, what do you think about political correctness? Garbage. <laughs> do you follow this guy on Instagram? Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. I Adam, because yeah. like yeah. I was, uh, I had this conversation with someone to actually a day class. I'm like, oh, I got Mitch on today, and they're like, best Instagram, <laughs> right? It goes over a lot of people's heads. Uh, I've and calmed s- down a little bit. And some of it I don't quite get <laughs> either. But I'm like, Mitch doesn't say much until he's got something. I, I don't. Nice. I don't believe in censorship, man. Like mm-hmm. at all, 100. percent Let people, you know, drown themselves out. Yeah, you know, if you're stupid, go ahead, yell, yell your stupid ideas to the world, and the world will just shut you down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah, censorship creates more problems. Yeah, I agree, man. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's as simple as having like everyone needs that one friend that will tell you the truth whether you <laughs> want to hear it or not, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, I don't want to hear that shit too much, yeah. but, but that's what censor that's what censorship is. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like to stop people from. From hearing the truth, yeah. you know what I mean. Like there is obviously some stuff should exist, you know, because of little years and whatever else. Like you know what I mean. But but yeah, man, if you're hiding the truth, you're just fucking up, fucking up the world. Yeah, you know it'll I mean? always and, come out. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah, like dick and fart jokes are hilarious. Don't yeah. censor any of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like I said, add add him on on Instagram because yeah. it is a good watch for sure. And uh, but you were on, are you on? Yeah, you're on Facebook now. Yeah, or or messenger. Kinda, you just had a messenger because yeah. mm-hmm. you got off there because there's just so many dummies. Like I did, like especially this person in a position like you or someone who has your type of views to sit there and watch people online. I would yeah. lose my mind. I used to. Uh, you know, intervene in those things and be like, no, look, okay, my experience is this, and, you know, your theory is incorrect because my real life experience trumps it. And they say, oh, no, no, that's just, you know, an isolated incident. And, you know, you go on, you go back and forth, but you can't, you can't argue with an idiot, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. they just, you can't argue stupid. Like, stupid can't yeah, be fixed. Exactly. Right. You know, That's so f- crazy to me, too, because if you have, like, an idiot or a man like yourself and you're, like, trying to talk about war, your experience, like that, how the hell are you going to listen to the idiot? Like, why are we yeah. not going to listen to what your real experience is and try to, like, go off somebody else's, like, opinion oh, or I idea? Have, I have had so many people tell me that it, that it wasn't that way. Yeah. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Well, in mean, reality, is uncomfortable, right? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. 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 Especially with, like, people's reality, like, day-to-day life here in North America compared to what you've seen. Like, oh, that's God, just... People have no idea. People wouldn't even understand it, it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, like, I, saw, I saw children fighting over our garbage to eat. Yeah. Uh, like, and, and people are yeah. complaining uh, they live in non Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> you remember that yeah. next time you throw out some food or something, yeah. people, yeah. like, yeah. Well, that yeah. was our that was our parents. Like, oh, there's kids starving kids yeah. in Africa. I'm like, oh. uh. Yeah, there is. yeah. And, but right. when you see them, it changes it, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, well, I went to because um, everyone, the, everyone's like, can, we live in a country where you can't starve to death. You know, you really can't. <laughs> It'd be hard, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah like everything's taken care of for poor you. Poor people are fat, right? Yeah. It, if you're dying, <laughs> if you're dying in the street, it's because you have mental illness or a drug addiction. Which a lot of those things, your mental illness, obviously not, but drugs and this and that. That's your choice. You mm-hmm. do that to yourself. And even then, someone's going to take you in. You know what I mean? Where I went to, I went to Brazil, 
And we have, we, everyone's like, oh, I'm in, I live in the ghetto. I live in this. And I'm like, I'm like, I went, I went to Rio de Janeiro, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have no fucking idea what the ghetto is, man. Yeah. I saw, coming off the airplane, you, you're going into Rio and you see the favelas. Like, <sighs> there's like these huge ant hills, like millions and millions of, how, like cans, like tin cans uh, mm-hmm. and sheds stacked on top of each other. And people like starving and murdering each other. I'm like, dude, we don't have... We have social assistance here. Yeah. You can't die in the street. Uh-huh. Like, we don't have hoods, man. Like, we do. Like, obviously, some people's circumstances are different and financial and whatever else. But, like, man, when you start to see the world. Yeah. There's... And I haven't seen shit compared to what you've seen. You know what I mean? But, like, it's like, yeah, man, we fucking hate Canada. Yeah. Fucking A. Yeah, I, I, I was <laughs> we, talking to my... Uh, any tick can have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my tailor is from Afghanistan, and I go in there every once in a while, I'll get my, you know, my unique patches on my gi, like my Hello hello Kitty gi. So <laughs> makes everybody feel uncomfortable. But Not uh, me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he had a bunch of, you know, he had his Afghan flag up and pictures of him as a kid, and I was like, oh, you, you're from Afghanistan, and you're, you know, where, like, where are you from? Because then we started talking about it, and... He's doing his thing. He's sewing. And he's like, and I tell him I was in the infantry, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, what part of Afghanistan were you in? And I said, oh, I was in Panjway most of my time. And he like stops what he's doing. And he's like, oh, my God. He's like, that's such a bad area. I'm like, well, yeah, that's why I was there, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he told me his story. His story was, you know, pretty heartbreaking. Briefly get into it. I said, well, what, you know, how did you end up here? He said, well, the Taliban came through uh, my village one day. And they took my father, who was a university teacher, and my sister, who was also a teacher. They took them outside and they shot them, executed them for being teachers. And then he said, I ran. And he said, I, I, went, he, I think he said he ended up in Iran, uh, Germany, Turkey, and then finally Canada. I think that was his story. There's obviously a lot more detail to it, but keep it quick. And uh, he, he, he thanked me. He was like, man, like, he's like, I can't go home. He's like, if I ever go home and the Taliban knows I'm there, they'll kill they'll me. They'll kill you. Uh, like, people thank me for my service all the time, and I've had conflicting views on that, and I've come to peace with it. But there was one time specifically that really, like, hit me hard. I was at my bank out of all places, and the teller, young guy, um, pro- probably couldn't have been any more than 25 years old. Like, uh, he talks to me, and he, I guess he sees the military pay in my bank. He's like, oh, are you in the military? And I said, yeah, yeah well, I was. You know, and we start talking about it. And he's, you know, he's like, so what'd you do? And I tell him and he's, and he stops and he's like, you actually went to Afghanistan and, and like fought the Taliban, like Islamic extremism. He's, yeah. Yeah. I said, that was my job, man. And he goes, he's like, I'm an immigrant. He's like, I was, in, I, I immigrated here from Niger, Africa. He said, uh, Islamic extremists were slaughtering us because we're Christians. And he said, my, my dad got us out in time. And he, he's like, I want to thank you. He's like, you fought what I ran away from. And I was, and, and like that, like, it was fuck, ninjas are cutting onions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get me, man. Uh, wow, man. But like to hear, you know, a young guy say something like that, like, mm-hmm. th- like the reality of it, you know what I mean? It really, really hit me pretty hard. I'll never forget it. Do you, um, do you find that you get grief because you're a soldier sometimes? Because people time, are just yeah. ignorant, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's assholes everywhere. And I'm somebody's asshole too. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you know, whatever. A lot of a lot of the people who give the the grief, they don't. They haven't been outside their Western bubble. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, you know what you say to those. You're like, listen, I'm a dick and you suck. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but I know because I know. Uh, yeah. Like, it's it, every generation of soldier, no matter what war, they come home and they're treated like dog shit for one way or another whether it's by your government or someone's like oh you're a child killer you know what i mean I'm like that's fucking yeah. <laughs> that's just the way of the world because yeah they don't under understand what's out there yeah. right and it's important it sucks war sucks yeah. but it, it takes uh there there's evil in the world that needs to be combated yeah and that's what you did i'll fight it anytime yeah as that's long probably as probably what probably why, why you have such love for Comic book characters, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Deadpool, yeah. Yeah. sick yeah, comic yeah, book characters. Yeah. Everybody's favorite anti-hero. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Fuck, I think that puts. We've been going at it for quite a while. Yeah, it's like. been uh, an hour and twenty minutes. Oh, Almost that. like we do it every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. What? Uh, what? You got anything on tap there? Uh, yeah. We uh, we quickly we were just going to go over UFC two thirty five because we were mentioned we forgot to go over it on the podcast mm-hmm. we did yesterday, but it was a huge card. I figured we might as well just jump right into. It. Just want to start right at the top. John Jones, Anthony Smith. What do you think about that? 
Uh, I actually didn't even really pay too much attention to that. Mm -hmm. I was surprised he dragged it out for five rounds, Me just too. slapping him around. Yeah. Like he could, probably could have stopped that guy when he wanted to. Yeah. Really? Think, yeah, that's what you think. But he, 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 that kid, Anthony's, uh, he's rugged. Like he's mm -hmm. real tough. But it wasn't by any means from what I saw competitive. It was just that guy yeah. not dying, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and he even got pen penalized a couple times and still won. Yeah, they took two points yeah, away John, from him. Yeah. That was, was the first time I've ever seen two points get taken. What was yeah. it for? I think uh, it was um, he kneed him while he was down. Yeah, does he, of course. Yeah. So yeah. he still had his hands on when he was getting up. And yeah. John just, he just timed the knee incorrectly. And There's a, that rule switching, too. It's kind of weird. I can't yeah, remember exactly yeah. how it is. But like, uh, so there was a bunch of people online, too, saying that uh, they thought Anthony Smith should have taken the DQ and the belts. And, and he got the pay, get the payday, get, get the, the rematch, show. all that stuff. What do you think about that? <sighs> how do you, I, don't know. I like what he said to that. He said, I wanted to earn it, not steal it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that sums it up. Yeah, in my I, I totally yeah. get that. I yeah. totally get that. I got a good, you know what? When we were, me and Tony were in Japan, he fought uh, Rumino Sato, who's like, you guys wouldn't really know who he is, but he's like the, he's Michael Jordan of MMA, like back then, right? He's the greatest, he's still, I think, one of the greatest fighters of all time. And Tony, uh, they, they're like, Tony, you want to fight? And it's Tony's hero. And he's like, <laughs> fucking right man i do right i get to test myself against the greatest fighter in the world and my hero and we're in the back everyone greases up it doesn't matter man <laughs> everyone greases up like so everyone's you get your vaseline on and there are very little rules in japan and so everyone and you crease up your ankles right so if someone's going for a foot lock or ankle lock or whatever else it's Slippery. like you slip out and we go to grease up Tony, tony's ankles and tony's like no man he goes, I'll fucking die with honor. And I was like, yeah, dude. Nice. And, yeah. That's a, and he went out and he fucked that guy up. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> he was getting his ass handed to him. And then he turned the tide, just fucking punched the guy out. And Beautiful. it was like, uh, actually, yeah, he's, he's on one of those. He's on, uh, probably on all these posters. Like, he's a fucking man. Uh, second from the top on the right side. That's Ruman Osato. Greatest fighter of all time. I see it, yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, but Tony's like, I'll, I'll die with honor. I'm like, good for you, I would have put on the Greeks. Yeah. <laughs> right? But I see, I, yeah, uh, I don't know. I just say, like, if you're getting paid that much money, I think I'd probably sleep okay in my brand new bed with that win money. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, plus the rematch money. Yeah, yeah. And, and I rematch, like it, but I'm a piece of shit, yeah. so whatever. Who mm -hmm. else was on that? It was, oh, Askren. Yeah, that was a big one. Askren and Robbie Lawler were talking about it. it was like the, probably one of the greatest slams ever in an MMA fight. Yeah. Oh, it was beautiful. And like an inch left or right. Oh. It was a spinal injury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was watching that with my seven-year-old son, and he got... I've never seen him get so excited over a slam before. <laughs> <laughs> he went... He's been in the air like that a million times, right? Yeah. So he kind of knew how to come to it. But it was still a hard spike. <laughs> and the punches and the afterwards. Ground after? Like, Robbie Lawler is uh, so violent. It's I know. amazing. I, I love, love watching he, he is put on this planet for one fucking thing, man. <laughs> but, and that choke at the end. The bulldog? Yeah. Uh, he get, I watched, at first I was like, now he was asleep. But then I saw it from the other angle. And you could see him give him yeah, the he thumbs does, up. He's yeah. okay. But I think another second. He there was wasn't there two minutes left in the round, something like a, that. Something like that, yeah. I don't believe he was getting out of it, but I it still remember. sucks. It's a it's a fight at that level. You should have let him go to sleep. Right? Yeah, Lawler's not the kind of guy to tap. Yeah, right. And it's he's only sleeping. You know what I mean? You should have let him. Should have let him go out. Right. Yeah. But he showed so much class, man. He got up like, "What the fuck?" And yeah. then he was like, yeah, "You're he's awesome, like, Herb. He's I'm like, sorry. It's yeah. all good." <laughs> Right, yeah. and Herb knew he made a mistake, but he was only doing his best because the ankle he had looked like his arm did, went limp. Yeah. Even right? the commentators, like Rogan and them, they're like, "He's out, he's, he's out, he's out." Yeah, yeah but so. then you saw, but when you did catch it from the other side, you're like, "Oh, no, yeah, he was, wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> he was totally with it." I felt bad for Herb because he just seemed like he was so confused. He's like, "Shit!" Like I thought you were. Yeah. He's like, "I, he's yeah. like, I don't know." It happens. That, yeah. That's a high yeah. pressure situation, man. That shit happens so fast. It's like you got to make that decision like that, mm -hmm. right? But again, with the sleeping, if his punches, you know, take care. <laughs> jump in and save the guy from himself if you're going to sleep like who cares every ref should in order to qualify to be a referee you should have to be put to sleep <laughs> so you, you know you wake up and you're like yeah it wasn't that bad I'll let that guy go to sleep yeah, fuck it yeah. right? so that's interesting so what about Goddard uh, with the Kamara Usman uh, Tyron Woodley fight he got a lot of criticism because he, he uh, stood them up and he said like this is a fight that was his response to when they said why are you standing us up and he's like it's a fight and yeah. Like, yeah, well, no shit. I, I didn't agree with the standing them up and breaking them up. I thought it was being kept busy enough for, for the fight to keep going. But mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it didn't change the outcome. Right. right? Yeah, exactly. Like it was five rounds of, well, he, won every, he won every round, right? Yeah, I yeah. think I, yeah, I think it was, yeah, all five. 
Hmm. Yeah. It was funny. Woodley was like, uh, it was like a bad dream. It's like, well, yeah, they call him the nightmare. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Did That's you see so the awesome. post fight when he went? Uh, it was uh, I think it was Woodley's mom. Seen or his mom. Wasn't, or something that, like wasn't that, that cool? Yeah. That was cool. That was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's like, it's moment. your don't. Yeah, it's your don't time. Cry. It's yeah. your time. He's coming. Don't worry. For they're you. gonna. They're all coming for you now. So enjoy it. And that line was kind of cool to hear say because like she understands like being the mother of a champion like everybody wants your wants your neck like yeah that was cool I thought that was awesome one king of the mountain it's Mm -hmm. I. The uh, they need to document more shit behind the scenes to show that these people are like they're real people, yeah. Yeah, right? The like sacrifice. They, yeah. Everyone just sees that fifteen minutes of action and violence, and they don't know what these guys go through mm-hmm. to get there, and they don't know the repercussions afterwards. Like losing a fight is fucking the worst, man. Like especially at that level. Like a lot of those guys say, "Well, everyone to get to that level, you put your whole life into it." Some yeah. people sacrifice more than others, but it's still everything you got, right? In that in that position like and then you lose like what it's devastating f- yeah. right mm-hmm. financially devastating emotionally like sometimes physically <laughs> yep a lot of times yeah. physically like, and if you lose it could be you could be cut right, it right. Could be, that's that could it be these it. guys you're if you lose that fight you're out of a job mm-hmm. and most of these guys they don't have anything else to go to right that's just what they do right and it's it is hard man no one wants to lose at anything especially the, the stakes are fucking high man yeah. people don't understand the the emotion and the how much stress is involved in that job man it fucking sucks it and sucks. you don't get a minute to cope or deal with it too there's a, a microphone in your face yeah, everything. right afterwards how do you feel yeah. like you don't get a second to process yeah. anything that's crazy but i like i also like that part too but they just should just show more of like the realness of it you know mm-hmm. what I mean? like, like not like an official produced interview like just put a camera on him when he's with his yeah, team or something like it's because people should see that like how much these like there's guys in the back grown man in the back crying because he just lost and now like how is he going to pay his mortgage you know what yeah. I mean? like there's a lot of shit that comes along because people just see the entertainment and the in the valley was that you that's my stomach yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, i hope we got that <laughs> yeah there's a lot that comes along with, with that it's a it's it's a it's a hard gig man and it, it comes with a lot of fucking baggage for sure that's why i respect dc he'll cry right in the right in the cage oh uh, man yeah I, I haven't had a fight where i didn't cry before, after, like sometimes in the ring, sometimes in my change room. Interesting. Always, man. Like I'm emotional, fucking pussy. Anyway, you've been to my gratings, man. I cry every grading. I gave you a clock and you cried. Yeah, <laughs> true, true. Right? Like it's um, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's it. I don't know. It's, like, it's okay to cry. Yeah, man. Yeah. Fuck. I almost so, cried like ten minutes ago. Yeah, it was good. It was you ninja, you got good reason. So I remember watching that. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name's girlfriend died in nine Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero. It was horrible. Oh. You guys don't even remember what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, speaking about that, did you hear yeah. Luke Perry just passed? Yeah, that sucks, man. How crazy is that? He was, he was he's on a I think he does a show called Riverdale or something. Like he was an active like working. Yeah, my stadium. wife watches that show. Yeah, uh, yeah. Fuck, that sucks, man. What a shame, man. Live it, dude. It happens yep. fast, no matter how much money you got. Yeah. Do DMT. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think, uh, other than that, I don't know who else was on that. Uh, really good one. Co- Cody Garbrandt and Pedro Munoz had a barn burner. Like, I feel bad for Cody because it's three straight, uh, like, KO savage losses. KO losses. I yeah. don't feel bad for him because he doesn't learn from his mm. mistakes. He comes out and does the same thing every mm. single time, expecting a different result. Like, Justin Buckles has come out now and said that um, he blames Uriah Faber and Faber's ego for for Cody losing so much and just something about like his, his control of the team and stuff like that and and game planning because he uh, Buckles brings up the Dominic fight because uh, he was so good in the Dominic fight he he was calculated he didn't take too many risks and now like it looked like he got headbutt and he just like flipped a switch it, and was yeah. like ah and just yeah, yeah, saw yeah. red yeah I don't know definitely maybe got isn't Buckles still with Alpha Male is he gonna post I think him? he's gone uh, I think he's gone I'll double check. Oh, that's a weird, I don't know. It's, you can blame, you can't, you know what? Own your shit, man. Like, you can blame this and blame that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Cody, hey, does, if you go in there, you made that decision to go fight. Sometimes you're going to get fucked up. Yep. Right? It sucks. And and uh, no one made you do it. Hmm. Right? It's, uh, everyone blames promoters for this and that and using these guys up. I'm like, man, it's your decision. Right? Own it, learn from it, move forward. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's also one of those things that, and I say this all the time because it's it's hard to let go of, man. Like to walk away from fighting is really, really fucking difficult. And promoters will bleed you dry. Yeah. They don't care if you win or lose. They care if, like if you if you get hurt, you're more valuable. People want to see violence, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. but if, uh, you need we need we need people to protect us protect us from ourselves. That's the problem. Like you've been knocked mm-hmm. out three times. Like why are you there? Mm-hmm. Right. There's someone should be more responsible with friends, yeah. family, like promotions, yeah, un- like unions. 
like Lawler, he he was off for like almost a year and a half, right? Because he he got those wars with Rory McDonald and uh, then Carlos Condit. Yeah, but he took that time off. He looked really good when he came back. Fuck, he's, fucking savage. He's he's he was born in the wrong century. Yeah, like, he, no, should yeah. Be like a he should have a battle axe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. I love guys like that, but at the same time, like he's still got his wits about him very well, and he's like he gets it, man. Like there's a reason you're that it's you're that age competing at that level, and uh, like with these young guys like yeah. you know what you're doing and mm -hmm. he's not just an animal like he's an intelligent he's guy. smart yeah yeah like anyway yeah <laughs> he's smart he can kill you a million different yeah. ways <laughs> but he's, you know, I mean, he's not pissing his money away and doing dumb shit like yeah. he's in it for the long haul and he's been there a lot for the long haul because yeah. he's he knows how to play the game right so what's the game plan lawler well uh i'm gonna go out there and try and murder him <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the rest gonna stop it before i do <laughs> yeah that's, that's always a game plan right I'm, every uh, punch i've ever thrown at a fight was to fucking uh, stop you yeah right i like to think i got a game plan and like oh here's my strategy i'm like nope i'm gonna land first yeah because i don't want you to touch me yeah no and, gonna, and everything i do is gonna try because i want you to stop from trying to touch me yeah nobody right? trains to lose a fight no I just do everything with fucking really bad intention, right? It's it's not the best game plan because it can make you tired, but I'm like, fuck that, man. I'm here to kill you before you kill me. <laughs> yeah, awesome. That, that's all there is to it. Like, it's like everyone's like, okay, let's get the takedown this round, right? Score yeah. points, do this, Zach. I wear stand out. I'm, no, no. Mm. Everything I do is to fucking hurt you. Yeah. I'm not setting anything up. I'm just going to go for the kill the entire time. And if it comes, it comes. If not, right? I didn't. Well, you got two belts on the wall. It must have worked. Are, I bought them both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bought, bought them both. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna sit back and coast, guy. I'm getting your face and fucking try to end it with everything, no matter how stupid it is. I'm just gonna do damage. That's amazing. Oh, I love it. You got anything else on there? Uh, did you see me, uh, Misha Sirkinov and uh, Johnny Walker? Yeah. That was a hell of a fight. 30 seconds, not very long. And but... that Muppet injures himself on his victory dance. Yeah, he tried to do the worm and blew his shoulder out or something. What he needs four weeks what, off. What a Come fucking on. hit. <laughs> He's got to feel pretty dumb after that. I thought eh? that was uh, going to be a much more competitive fight. Like, mm -hmm. Misha's a fucking handful if he if he drags you to the floor, right? Funny, Misha is... I've known Misha for 20 years. He would come... Because he was a judo guy. He came from Russia or Latvia or whatever. And he came and he would train at our gym. And they're like, yeah, this kid's 16 years old. I'm like... He was, I think he was 16 for like the first five years. <laughs> that I knew him, right? I'm, I'm questioning that guy's age. I, th I honestly think he was probably like, he say, said he was 16, but he came from an Eastern Bloc country. He was probably 25 when he got here. Yeah. He was just fighting junior division. <laughs> he kept, kept waiting. Greasy. Right? <laughs> Fuck animal though. Like, I mean, he was a kid and he grabbed me. I was like, I'm fucked. Yeah. Like, he's just a monster of a man. Like, but I thought it would be more competitive. He just timed him and ate it, right? Yeah, according to uh, Wikipedia, he's only 32. <laughs> So that yeah. would mean he, that means he would have been, yeah, been out twenty. So he was twelve when I met him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> six foot, six foot two, like one hundred and ninety five, two hundred pounds of pure muscle at twelve years old. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Juice, <laughs> yeah, Eastern yeah. Block juice. Yeah, his opponent though, Johnny Walker. They're probably going to run him right up the the ranks at light heavyweight. They'll have him fighting top ten guys. Oh, I, I yeah, yeah, for sure. There's lots of hype behind hype him, right? Train, so, yeah. mm -hmm. and then until someone grabs him and fucking kills him which should probably happen he's a one trick pony I think we'll yeah. see yeah, we'll it'll see it'll be interesting the other, the other great fight though uh, Diego Sanchez and Mickey Gall Mickey Amazing. Gall called out Diego Amazing. thought that he could get the win wanted the old guy and you Dude, know he fucking pounded on that guy it was I I sat there with a smile on my face the whole time Loved watching it. that unfold he put a beating on him like systematically like just took him apart. You could see how bad Gull wanted out of there. But by the end, of it, <laughs> he was right? so tired after the first round. So yeah. you could just tell he was like, "I'm done." Oh, that's the what worst. are you gonna do? He, <laughs> he, Diego's been in the UFC for 14 years. That's crazy. 14 years, man. Fuck. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure he won Ultimate Fighter season one. He, he did. did. Yeah, yeah. and like 170 pounds. It was a middleweight. One of the two middleweight. Yeah. He won. It, he won. Out, he won to. Yeah, he won at 185. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's fought all the way down to 145. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He has. Eh. That's crazy. Weird. Weird dude, though. Real weird. Yeah, I love the uh, my uh, my favorite was when he was coming out with a yes, where he would just eat yes, yes, with Tony yes, Robbins. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he's got his Tony Robbins. Oh going man, it was his his post fight on that was weird too. I turned it because he started talking about uh, you know I'm just really big into the anti aging now or something like that. I'm he's, like, yeah, all right, dude, check out. That's kind of strange, isn't it? But he yeah. does, he does look kind of good for a dude that old. So you might want to like figure out what he's uh, doing. I don't know. He's just made of leather and. He got about three brain cells left in my head. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, he was a weird dude from the get go. It's not like he's punchy. He's just a yeah. strange fucking human being, right? So, uh, that, I I really enjoyed that fight though because he took that guy, like put a put a 
beaten on him. It was good. <laughs> Everything that kid did, he was three steps ahead and punched him in the face for it. It was mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, I Mickey Gall made his name off of beating CM Punk. He hasn't really been. I think he might have had one good win since then, but everything else has been a little rocky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, he actually is pretty, is pretty decent. He's just not that. He's not on that level. Yeah. Well, I think he was. It was. He, his first fight was in the UFC. Like yeah, he won the contenders or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a rush. You shouldn't be there. Not at yeah. that point. Hey, you gotta take the ride though. Like absolutely. I would, look what Sage Northca, Northca did. Yeah. He he won that uh, Dana White, you know, looking for a fight thing, and now he's like the poster boy of one FC. Yeah, good. He, you know, he's probably getting made, paid more just for promo over there than he was. Yeah. And the UFC paid him his whole career. So. Well, they also don't drug test in one FC, which is yeah. oh, they don't. No. Have you seen I'm a lot more in Vitor, man? The guy is huge again. He's, oh, yeah, he's yeah, with the one. He yeah. went to one as well. Oh, do we got like TRT yeah. Vitor back? Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be wheel kicking nobody's. This is yeah. going to be awesome. Yeah. yeah That's amazing. I wonder who they'll square him up against first. Because there's like that weight and that promotion, there isn't really like. No. All their guys there that are good are really. They're little guys, right? Yeah. Little, little pygmies. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, I'm fucking tired. I'm tired. This was We're going to get you out here before your stomach starts growling again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Dinner time. All right. Uh, I got nothing else. Homework assignment. You know what? Read a book, right, Mitch? Yeah. yeah. Mitch is a big reader. He gives me books here and there, and I pretend to read them. <laughs> too, 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 too impressive. Are they like yeah. Dr. Seuss books or like actual? No, like that, like like words. Oh, okay. Words. Yeah, not, not pictures. pictures. Not a lot of pictures. And also, take a take a page out of Mitch's book because he he won't talk about it and he doesn't give himself enough credit. You're always doing something like sneaky and kind for people, <laughs> whether it's make. <laughs> Books or buying people keys and get, yeah. you get a little. I know what you're I, I don't post it on social media. Yeah, I know it didn't happen, yeah. right? But so you don't. So many people do that, right? They're just doing shit to make. Everyone does shit to make themselves feel good. Why else would you do something? Yeah. Right. When you give, I give a gift or do something. I'm like, because it makes me feel good to do it for you, That's, right? Yeah. But it doesn't mean you have to get online and brag about exactly. it, right? Yeah. So kind of, I think it defeats the purpose. To be yeah. honest, yeah. I do a lot of a lot of stuff. The good that I do, I do post online, but it's I'm not trying to show off and trying to motivate other yeah. people to do something right mm-hmm. but but yeah you don't have to you do a lot of cool shit for a lot of people and you don't talk about it because i know <laughs> you, you have for me a few times and i appreciate it guys be uh be like mitch do nice shit for people don't put it on instagram yeah or facebook or facebook <laughs> and at homework assignment yeah. is go check out mitch's instagram because it's yeah. pretty, pretty it's what is pretty, it for the people let them know it's uh patient 556 which is you know patient as in like mental health patient and 556 five, is the caliber of rifle they use in afghanistan so i could have told you that yeah. i like it yeah. I, I like actually it. Didn't yeah. but <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a private instagram and if i don't know you i don't accept it so oh, <laughs> you're about to get blasted yeah, like yeah. the 30 people that listen to our yeah. show they're gonna, they're gonna hit you so, <laughs> so i think i think we're about good uh man that was that was i think that was our longest one yet yeah that's our longest for sure yeah. oh, and we didn't even get me. into dmt you want to talk talk about it real quick? Yeah, we we should we should it'd be wrong of us not to quickly talk right. about it. Yeah, like, ask away. <laughs> okay, so we were talking about it very quickly before, but the best thing I think we should just jump on. You're talking about how ayahuasca is like a feather, and then yeah, next I never did ayahuasca, in. but I did DMT. So ayahuasca is like the drink, and mm. I heard a shaman describe ayahuasca as like a feather where you raise up and then you come back down gently, and it takes about anywhere from four to six hours. DMT is a synthetic version. You like smoke it with some CBD weed, and you know. Like off the center, ship, right? center of the universe in like three seconds. So what was the experience like for you? Because we were talking about like you've you've had or done other drugs in the past, so it wasn't like you were coming in with a clean slate. Like yeah. if you had to compare it to any drugs. So I did even... uh, I did DMT strictly for obviously the fun of it, but for therape- therapeutic reasons for the post traumatic stress disorder. Been reading up on it, and uh, it's been used, you know, somewhat controversially, but it ha- there is success with it. So my buddy and I were like, "Fuck it, let's do it." You know, mm-hmm. we've done tons of stupid shit, so. We went out to uh, the range and we shot guns all day and then we we're like, all right, let's go do some drugs. <laughs> so we went off this place and I went first because he had already done it. And uh, the, you have to take three hits to do the, the breakthrough, breakthrough to the other side, they call it. And the first hit was awful. I've never tasted anything so terrible in my <laughs> life. And he's like, you got to hold it in. You got to hold it in, man. And I fucking hold it in and let it out. And he's like, again, you got to take one more. You got to take two more. Let's go number two. So I take number two, a little, little bit more tolerable. But I look at him and I'm like, I understand now. That's what I said to him. And my eyes just went with water. It looked like somebody had taken two bottles of water and just poured them. All these tears came out. And he's like, your fucking eyes are melting. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and he's like, take hit number three. And I take hit number three. And he's like, hold it, hold it, hold it. 
and held it for as long as I could and finally I exhaled. Nothing comes out. I'm like, where'd it go? And he's like, it's in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, close your eyes. So I, I like, I just, it just hits you. Like, it's so fast. And I've never done acid, but uh, apparently the, the, Me the early, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the early onsets of it are very similar to acid. Like I was looking at the table and I could swear I could see the molecular structure, how it was built. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. was, like and the it's geometry like, looking Yeah, thing. and it's yeah. like, you know, I'm like looking at this little dragon swimming around. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and he's like, just close your eyes and let it take you. So I did that. I closed my eyes and off I went, man. I went into this like orange and green kaleidoscope of just like warmth. Like it felt really good. And then uh, I saw this light and this light kept coming closer and closer and closer and the only way I can describe it is, uh, you know, like what a meteor would look like. Meteorite material, that texture of a rock, space rock. And on it, it was like in an altar shape, almost like an upright rectangle. And on it was this little white light. And I remember looking at it and I was like, oh, there it is. It's literally what I said to myself. Oh, there it is. Like I had lost something. And then I watched it go away. And then... Uh, as it went away, I could hear the music coming back. Like we were listening to music. It just snapped back to reality. And it was over. And I felt like I had lost something I wasn't supposed to have. Hmm. If that makes any sense. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, he's like, so how was it? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've heard a lot of people who use it for <laughs> medical reasons say that you don't get what you want mm -hmm. from that experience, you get what you need. Interesting. Hmm. And I had a, it was life changing, man. Really? Yeah. really How positive. long ago was this? Well, two years ago. Really? Fuck. You know, yeah. I don't know, man. Nothing you told me today about being a soldier or doing DMT <laughs> is at all fucking appealing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just going to keep riding out being me. Yeah, you, know? you do you, I'll do me. Man. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. But if you decide to do DMT again, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's our, our, our first episode is a DMT trip. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck that, man. No way. Not what? for me. If, uh, you know, if anybody's going through something and they're running out of options, I know they're using it in the medical community, like treat mm -hmm. addictions. And hmm. they right, showed well. a, like a MRI ver uh, image of the brain and they were describing it as like trauma is just doing laps in this part of the brain. And then when they introduced DMT, it let it go. And let it process the way it was supposed to. It's pretty cool to see like the scientific. I got some trauma, so we'll yeah. get into that's another episode, friends. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the one last question I guess I'll ask is: You said you get what you need, not what you want. Were you able to like quantify what you like got from the experience? So I've talked to other people who have you know gone through some shit who have done it, and they described their trip as like pure hell. But when they got back, they were like kissing the ground because interesting because they were like, man, I totally needed that. Hmm. But, interesting. Uh, that doesn't sound awesome either. Yeah. I Well, we were talking about it off air before. I'm terrified by it. Like when mm -hmm. I hear people talk about it, because I think it's like recently, especially with Joe Rogan's podcast and all that yeah. stuff, it's become like bro -y and cool to yeah. like, yo, let's do some DMT. And I'm like, you guys are fucking crazy. Like this yeah. sounds awful. Do sounds what you're afraid of, man. It's fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, 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 yeah. that being locked inside of my own brain is... It's yeah. not pleasant. In no, there. you're you're not in there. You're you're somewhere else. Well, maybe like that, a, I guess maybe that's it then. It's like another dimension. Because like what this. I got going on in here right now... Uh, it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to try something yeah. new. Well, I got rid of something that was in there. So oh, good. Nice. Whatever, whatever works, That's man. Good, man. Whatever works. Okay, we got assholes coming up, showing up to use the gym now. So that we've been at it for Fuck a bit. Sakes. Fuck, All right. <laughs> Fuck these assholes. Um, I, that was a solid day, man. I yeah. learned a lot. No, well, thanks for having me. It was great. Yeah, no, thanks it was for sharing fun. everything. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, no, it, it was, awesome. was a different. I was, what I was hoping, I was yeah. something a little bit different. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sorry, I got a little too rapey there. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, it wasn't you. That was rapey. I don't think you're allowed to say rapey. Yeah. Yeah. But we've said it about five yeah. times. <laughs> it's my show, man. We'll do whatever the fuck yeah, we yeah. want. Uh, no, that was uh, that was a cool change in different, like different perspective and different stories. Like we're always on the martial arts kind yeah. of thing in here, and it's kind of cool to hear uh, something new. And yeah. I appreciate your time. Thank well, you very much. I got lots more of the dark stuff. Lots more dark stories. <laughs> baby, baby steps. <laughs> Baby steps. Uh, All right, cool. Clap boy. Awesome. Thanks for listening, everybody.